All right, welcome to the Sebe Cast number 137 with Lake and Puggin. How are you guys both doing today? Good, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing pretty not good. Not too bad, not too bad. I was waiting for Lake to go. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting on Puggin to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I've had both of you on the cast before. It's been about a year for Lake. It's I, I feel like it's almost been about two years for you, Puggin, but I, I literally can't remember. Yeah, that sounds right um but yeah it's it's a pleasure to have you both sitting here with me for the next few hours and we get to talk a little bit of escape hopefully uh the uh listeners uh, well i know for a fact like people love the pvm cast and they and they love talking like deep pvm stuff and you guys are obviously very well known for that so um and there's been a lot that's come out since puggin uh, since uh you've been on and I don't really think much has really happened besides Desert Treasure 2 since Lake's been on. So um, Yeah, I wanna say I wanna say our last cast was like right before Wilderness Rejuvenation, I think. Yeah, that must have been it. I think it was around this time last year. Maybe like uh, late October or something. Um But yeah, so I guess first thing I want to talk about is uh just how you guys have been. Obviously you guys are both you know, still streaming, still uh gaming uh, i think lake your hardcore died recently which was extremely unfortunate and uh pug in i believe you're just kind of like working on your iron for the most part so i guess lake what what's what's been up for you and then i'll go to pug in uh, as far as runescape goes uh, lately my content has been uh continuing the account that died like six weeks ago um a lot of people are always like, what's the point? You already have a good Iron Man, stuff like that. But uh, to me, it's just like a, a different playthrough, pretty much. Considering that uh, my other account is like six years old, and, and it pretty much did all the new stuff as it was released, like in that order. Whereas on this one, I can kind of like pick whatever kind of order I want. Mm. True. I can back that up, because I kind of did the same. My first hardcore DC, and I also continued to play it. I don't know if you remember Pawugan, but... yeah. yeah. It was quite a bit of fun, but recently I've been kind of more focusing on IRL stuff more than the game, but the hardcore, man, I haven't logged into it in like three months. I think the last thing I did on it was the, uh, the fan kit. I've just been kind of doing whatever on the iron. Mm. Yeah, the, you guys have definitely done quite a few playthroughs just on different styles of Iron Man. Um, I mean, do you, when you start a new Iron Man or a hard, a, like a new hardcore, is it just every time you do it, like every iteration, is it just much simpler to get to a spot where you want simply because of just plenty of experience and just game updates in general? Or do you generally just go the same route that you are comfortable with that you've done before? What do you guys feel about that? Uh, I would say, um, uh, I would say shortcut for sure, but I, I don't think I'd use the word like more simple because honestly, now you have so many more options to think about like smithing. You got to decide if you want to do Giant's Foundry or do the same thing that's been the best thing for like 10 years, Blast Furnace mm. with the uh, gold ore. It's, it's just nice to have like different routes on stuff though, honestly, like a lot more, a lot more leniency as opposed to one strict meta that you really can't go wrong not doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, that's definitely the case. It's not really much simpler. It's actually just you have way too many options. Is the, True. Yeah. Is is the gauntlet like the rush now? Is that just kind of what everyone does? That seems to be the uh, dominating meta now with new accounts. I mean, it's definitely not mandatory, but it's. Pr I feel like it's always going to be one of the more rewarding ones because it doesn't take that long to get to and absolutely shits out everything. And then both uh, game-changing at that stage. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Puggin? Um, so I haven't really done too many. I mean, I guess if we count the group hardcore, it's like four. But yeah, anything over would... one, I just think is too many already. So yeah, <laughs> it's, just... it's um. So like from my first iron, like I did like I think Lake also probably did this, but I did air battle stabs to ninety nine crafting. You probably did too, Sebe. But oh, wait, you did and, like, like like that was like your main method? Yeah. That was that was the that was the juice back then. Like, Damn. Oh, so so you would do like the daily battle staves and all that, and then. Uh, um. Yeah. From Zap. I would like actually yeah. buy them from the yeah. Magic Guild 
like oh shit like so not just your dailies but you would just sit there and <laughs> yeah. I, I, it was I, awful bro i definitely did a lot of that the thing is we didn't even have to complain because that's just like the game was so fundamentally different back then like so, there were yeah. so many efficient methods that were just hopping worlds we we're just used to it yeah and um uh like winter todd it's kind of a thing of the past like if you can get magic logs you can just literally do lms and you're mm. just chilling for money yeah, I guess it also depends on your overall goals for the account. Like, I, I feel like with you guys, it's mainly just get to a really solid PVM stage where you have all that. For me, it's yeah. always been like, well, I guess I really haven't made other accounts. But I feel like in the back of my mind, I would just push for 99 fire making the first thing just because my end goal, even if I don't even state what my goal is, I think just internally, it's always like to max in a sense. So I would just get it done with anyway. Um, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what do you guys think about the uh, current state of the game? There's obviously been a lot of controversy regarding skilling updates. Um, let me just list a few of the things that have come out in the past several months. So forestry uh, has come out and then there was scar essence mine that actually just came out yesterday. And that was being you know uh presented to us about a month ago and then the duke mining full-on nerf came and uh that was obviously <laughs> extremely controversial as well and of course now we have shooting stars which do not deplete when others go to them and uh so you can just mine with like uh, like literally a thousand people <laughs> it still sits there for 20 minutes per phase so i guess in no particular like order or anything or if like one doesn't really ha hasn't affected you i guess i'll just ask you lake first uh what have you been your overall thoughts on these controversies do you have any like hot takes that you uh have been hiding from us <laughs> um man that was a lot so uh <laughs> yeah, yeah that, I, I guess we'll tackle i guess we'll tackle what was like the funniest controversy to me the duke mining okay i uh i never really had an issue with like the uh effort to xp ratio that it was because of how like truly slow it was and uh i personally do have that kind of play style of like trying to take advantage of zero time stuff while doing other things like i, I do a lot of mobile mobile stuff like that regularly but uh my, my problem with it was definitely the uh like six hour space bar fall asleep stuff yeah and so uh i was happy to see it uh, taken care of and shooting stars was actually what i was hoping it was it would get replaced with but uh on the shooting stars one, I guess my only problem with that is um, like how people end up going into one world and just like causing ridiculous lag. I think uh, yeah, I want to say Ultra Miami like died on a recent hardcore that he made oh, to no. that happening. Wait, did he? Like a gauntlet? Yeah. Holy shit! That is horrible. It, it's extreme. Like for for those that haven't been associated with it, I mean, it literally goes from a world with 600 population to 2,000 in a matter of like a minute, like a literal minute. <laughs> I think I saw a picture of the Discord saying like, "These are worlds we won't scout," which pretty much forces people to play on like certain worlds. Which oh wow, better than nothing. But yeah, but yeah. then those worlds just fill up yeah to a point where it's unbearable to play anyway but yeah damn i uh i somehow have not been on a world where like a thousand players logged in and it started lagging like it hasn't happened to me yet somehow i haven't either mm. yeah it's probably not a great time right now to be playing a hardcore dangerous content at least i would wait until we get a statement from jagex because I, I i think they are gonna make a change i just don't really know what it's gonna be so but yeah i i definitely agree with you lake um I mean, we like with shooting stars right now, you're getting triple the XP. Almost, well, I guess almost triple. It depends on the tier of the star uh, XP with a very similar method where you just go to a star location, click once. But with this case, you'd have to click every you know 15 to 20 minutes, which is still just a very long time. It's extremely generous. But yeah, my my whole concern with Duke mining initially was just the fact that people are taking advantage of holding down spacebar, which in turn is cheating and uh, just gaining XP for six hours straight. That was my whole problem with it. Yeah, I totally feel you on that one. Because uh, like I was saying, like I'm definitely a big advocate for like taking advantage of zero time, nearly zero effort things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just like, I don't know, it's like crossover efficiency, I guess. But uh, 
the uh the six hour stuff overnight was like literally botting <laughs> yeah the the um one of the unfortunate things is like if you take that stance, like I was pretty hard against uh, Duke mining, and then you know I get accused now of like, oh well, why weren't you ever, you know, making a huge statement about splashing and NMZ? It's like, dude, I've been I've been literally against NMZ and splashing since 2015. <laughs> like it just like it, you get to a point where it's just not even worth talking about anymore because clearly nothing's being done. And it and to be fair, it's combat XP, so it's really not that game breaking because, y like, you have Slayer as a skill. It's like you're you're just kind of those kind of coincide. Like, so if you were getting like Slayer XP and combat XP doing like a six hour thing, I'd have a serious problem with it. But it's it seems a little bit different with combat XP, at least in my mind. I don't know if it's unpopular, but I really don't care too much about the duke mining like honestly if, if i wasn't max i probably would have done it i don't know if i'm just lazy or what but i mean literally anybody would do that i mean <laughs> if, if they were going to keep it literally if they were going to just keep duke mining as was and they were saying okay yeah we're not going to ban anybody that holds you know their thing on a space bar mainly because it's completely undetectable then like i would be doing it because why not like why not just click once before bed every night and just gain six yeah. i mean I, I don't even know if I would do it, to be honest, because I don't really care that much about XP at this point. But it's just one of those things where it's like, I could be, you know, so what? I don't know. It's it's it was bad for the game in my in my taste. But um, I can agree with that for sure. Yeah, it's tough, though. Well, we also have and I, I want to ask you guys about this because there seems to be a general sentiment, um, especially with reddit and i know like obviously there's a crossover in communities but just the overall generally reddit is very toward like progressing the game to a state where it's not even like the game hardly anymore and one of those is just they are okay with idle methods and it's it it, it is an argument to be had mainly because we're all entering like our 30s at this point <laughs> oh, well some of us and uh you know life kind of hits you and there is an argument to be made in the conversation to be had about like is it okay at this point for idle methods to be a thing or are we going to resist it so do you guys have any thoughts on just idle methods in general i know addy there was a tweet from addy i don't want to misquote him by any means but in his original tweet he does want something that's about 10 to 20 percent of the most efficient skilling rates to be idle that's what he said in the thing and then of course I, I saw some replies and now he's kind of changing his stance to more like afk but we already have that and I'm, I'm totally okay with that but just the idle of sitting there for 25 minutes on end with every skill do you think that's a good route to go down do you guys have any thoughts on that um i don't know about every skill but um i would say as far as like the general topic of um idle methods being in the game at all that's a uh, that's something that I think makes RuneScape so good and makes it reach such a such a wide audience is the fact that you can play it at whatever kind of intensity that you want. You can uh, do like 25 minute AFK like Nightmare Zone shooting stars or you can do like the most click intensive thing ever like No Stun Awaken Leviathan or something, you know? True. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think that's a big reason for the game's success is that it, it has something for everybody like that. And a lot of people will want to like be on both ends of that spectrum i feel like yeah what about you pugan yeah i i feel like there's quite a bit of methods already in the game like yeah you can do 1.5 tick teaks or you can just chop at a magic tree and i don't know it, i feel like there's enough to kind of satisfy well it should satisfy most people but Reddit's kind of a different breed. Um, yeah, I don't really mind too much either way. Okay. Well, I know you guys are both obviously like PVMers and you're not really the uh, complete demographic. I should be just yelling about this <laughs> for the whole podcast. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about Desert Treasure 2 because you actually just brought up Awakened Leviathan. What, do you, what are you guys' thoughts on uh, the Awakened variants? Uh, I was pretty happy with them overall in terms of like unique mechanics and uh, like not just being like a fifty percent modifier on the old bosses. Mm -hmm. I, I would I would say the difficulty was good. Uh, I was surprised. Sorry. 
continue. Yeah, same, honestly. Uh, the, the only thing that um, I was asking for pretty much was uh, giving successful kills a guaranteed orb. So that's actually like realistic to like try to camp them out if you get that good at it. Hmm. That's a good point. That's more so just speaking on like how fun they are to do that it kind of sucks you can't do them as much as you want to. Yeah, they, yeah. Um, and, and you guys have both gotten full blood torment. I know Pug and you got yours really early. Have both of you gotten it on your Iron Man? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have it on the, the main Iron Man. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, I actually saw your tweet. Like, you actually got it really uh, in very few attempts as well. You well, did it without main practice, too. King's, Even more beast. King shit, yeah. yeah. So what I had to I had to uncharge my thing when I see you get the blood runes for the Torva. <laughs> uh what was the hardest one? Is it, is it Leviathan? Um attempts wise yeah, Leviathan. Yeah, Leviathan also took me the most attempts. I uh people always ask this one a lot, like which one's the hardest? And I always have to give like a double answer to it because I'm like, well, the 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 enrage phase of Leviathan is like hands down the hardest part of anything, pretty much. You're gonna but, say uh, Bard. Bardorvis is like yeah. a more like steady level of intensity. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. it's like the whole four minutes you're like constantly like on your toes. I completely. So agree it's with like that. a it's like a more spread out difficulty as opposed to like Leviathan is like balls to the wall for that one phase, pretty much. Yeah, and it's at the very end where you're already like kind of panicking you're like oh my gosh it's almost over but not really yeah that's the same with you puggin yeah i agree with the uh like the consistent bar difficulty it's um and i found myself like dying mostly on leviathan like before the enrage just to dumb shit oh yeah and, same um, i uh <laughs> i used i used uh i think it was 16 orbs total and i only got to the enrage five times <laughs> oh shit <laughs> But yeah, the Enraged is honestly like the kind of PVM that I really want more of. Like that's kind of um, the intensity that I like and would want so, more content to be like that. Uh, now, I haven't done that fight. I haven't even, I mean, I've only killed one Leviathan. That was during the quest. I just haven't started on that grind yet. But um, I've definitely watched a lot of kills and... It seems like it's actually to the point of being overly, and it's not just difficult, like obviously it's difficult, but it seems like overly, um, what am I trying to say? Like overly concerned with just mouse precision. Like, like you just have to it's just be a god at just mouse precision rather than it being a real mechanical, like, okay, like I'm understanding I don't know. It, it it feels like it's crossing the line of like you just have to get like kind of fucking lucky in a, in a no. sense, unless you're just absolutely I mean, a god with precision. It's definitely a little bit of both. Um, I think me and Lake have practice of kind of clicks like that from like flicking Inferno sets and shit. But mm. I think everybody has the capability to do it if they put in enough practice without getting like super lucky. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. There's something about, like, where, you know, you saying that that would be, like, somewhere that, like, the team should take harder level difficulty content in the future. I just, I sometimes just think, like, is that where we want to go? Or do we want more, like, and, and of course, there's, there's a place for both. I'm not, uh, like, accusing you of saying, like, that's the only path to go down. But, like, I would almost say it would be better to have more just strategical situations that are like think on your feet but you know if you make um it, it, like you're not forced to click you know four different times in a in a single tick just to mm -hmm. you know get this done with and not die i feel like the the strategy and the like the quick thinking i think is actually the most important and um i don't know though it's tough what do you what do you guys think well, I mean, for both of those boss fights, like uh, Awaken Vardy and Awaken Leviathan, um, really what it comes down to is multiple ticks in a row where you're moving and prayer switching in the, in the same tick. Yeah. No, so, uh, you, you, I mean, you what, what you're seeing is like requiring insane mouse precision and stuff is really just combining the two most fundamental mechanics in the game and just ramping up the intensity with it. Yeah, I just feel like there would be a, like 
we can all agree there would be a certain point where that would become too egregious, like something where you have to literally click, you know, two different armor pieces into a prayer, into moving and clicking the boss or so, just something ridiculous within a tick continually, like every two ticks, you're having to do this whole like five click combo, just upkeep it for like a minute. Like there would be something at the point where it would just become too egregious. Yeah, so. I don't think they would. I don't think they would ever add anything to the game that requires you to turn it into ten thirteen. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's true. But but, that, but that's my concern. Is like I'm already thinking Awaken Leviathan is crossing that threshold. But that's my opinion. I just think like if this portion of the fight were to last twice as long, for example, it would just become almost. And I know like the very very uh, there would be like you guys would probably include it as well. But like the very top you know gamers of all time are probably thinking oh no no that's totally fine but like we have to also consider like is this too hard at this point just for the sake of difficulty like if we just extended that portion of the fight like i feel like it would just become just d just stupid just like come mm -hmm. on i also i also think there should be content that is kind of limited to that top percent top percentile of people that are kind of pretty advanced at the game like there's kind of content for everybody and i mm -hmm. kind of i don't know i'm I'm really happy with the awakened bosses like i was really surprised how difficult they were and um i don't know it kind of gave me a little bit of hope for the future yeah because no, i was kind of under the uh impression that we were never really going to get like super difficult content again yeah, it was it was impressive, and especially how quickly they just released that. It was just boom. Okay, here you go. Like, really, you're not even gonna get like data on us with the regular variants. You're just gonna send it, and they did it flawlessly. I feel like so. Um, Lake, you mentioned you know having guaranteed orbs from the fight. I I agree with the fact that w you should be much heavy, much more rewarded with getting a kill from the fight. Um, my concern with guaranteed, well, I don't know. I guess the guaranteed orbs really doesn't, there really isn't a problem to the that. The end result is if you never did the fight in the first place. Some yeah, you're right. In the game. You're right. And if you die, you lose an orb still. So the, my concern when you said that was that the price of the orbs would dramatically drop, but they wouldn't because you'd continually just be going back into the fight. Yeah. True. I mean, I have no idea what the price of the orbs is now, but I'm going to assume they were the highest ever whenever people were going for the No Stone Awaken because then they were buying hundreds of them, like multiple multiple people were. Mm. 1.6 So I imagine they've probably bro. stabilized since that. Oh, they're 1.6 mil right now? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking, I mean, I mean well, let's just think a year from now. I mean, a year from now, what do you guys think the, think the orbs are going to be? There's actually going to be a, be a few people listening to this in a year from now, and they're going to see if you guys are right or not. But I, I honestly think the orbs will be around like 600k, maybe 500k. I'm thinking like 200, 300. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking shy of a mil by a little bit. Okay. I just don't think they'll drop too dramatically because as soon as they hit a certain point, it'll almost be like like the... Like, I would probably just, if I was a main, I guess, I would just do it for fun at that point because it's not that big of a cost. I feel like right now, doing it for fun, you still have that in the back of your mind. Like, oh, 1.6, 1.7 mil. That's kind of expensive. Um, yeah, so that's cool. It is cool. It puts, it gets, uh, I, in my opinion, I think the team deserves a lot of praise for that. And I think we are on a path of like okay at least the team understands that there is super high level gamers that want intensity and want really difficult stuff um the lake you since the last episode i'm pretty sure you, no actually i'm actually remembering the title of your last save cast which had something to do with the 575s or the, whatever you were doing but what are your thoughts on like a compare toa running you know whatever it is the closest to 600 you can do in solo compared to like awakened variants is it even close in difficulty uh well i mean nothing in toa at all except for maybe you can argue front row warden but that even at 600 with like max gear shadow and stuff doesn't even last that long but nothing even comes close to matching the intensity of like awakened leviathan and rage 
and really not even Vardorvis either. Uh, TOA is more of like a like the. I feel like part of the challenge for high invocation TOA is how long it is really, and uh, it's kind of just very limited right? room for mistakes. Yeah, you, uh, you you just don't get that many opportunities to make mistakes, and then uh, at the hardest part of P four, you pretty much can't make any mistakes. I'll say your Zebak flicking is kind of cool. I've never it tried is. it. But... Oh, the uh, the step back stuff. That's pretty badass. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I got that from watching Noob Type do it. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> dude, where did Noob Type come from? I swear, he just entered the scene at TOA, and now he's just an absolute did. god. I I had never heard his name before TOA. <laughs> no know. idea how. He just he just pulls up, does a five hundred, then he does like a five fifteen, and then they add Fank it. So like that was. Jesus. I don't remember how the invocations were, but that was hella impressive. Yeah, he's continued to impress too. I mean, he's an actual wizard. I'm I'm it's always cool to just see those kind of mysterious people you've never heard of just enter the scene. You're like, oh, they're really like the top talent. Like, holy shit. Yeah. Actually, I think it was a was it a five four? It was something crazy, and it was no no supplies and that was back when you actually got nothing from the ghost so like he did oh, it without wow. salt and no adren oh my god that was uh like locator or redemptioning the uh, obelisk and everything yeah <sighs> yeah no i yeah we we got some crazy gamers uh nowadays and um so one of my concerns is like, you know, you just mentioned like not doing it with salts and stuff. It feels like there's invocations and I know TOA has been out for a while and it's probably fine as is, but I always, I, I just felt like having invocations that just make the content worse, like just more unfun just for the sake of difficulty was like a bad move. Just for example, not being able to spec, like only being able to spec at a hundred spec, I just thought was just such a stupid invocation like who like who this isn't making anything more fun it's just difficulty that actually loses fun in my opinion do you guys have any thoughts yeah. on like things like i just think there's su there's such better ways to go about invocation system than that i would uh i would say i definitely agree with that uh one of my like pet peeves is uh it's you hear it pretty often how uh like the like the restriction invocations that you're talking about, and a lot of people would be like, "Oh, they don't even make it more difficult. It's just got more defense." And it's like, no, it, it does make it more difficult, but um, uh, would be like foolish to say that that's more creative or fun slash engaging than like actual mechanical invocations would have been. Because mm -hmm. like, it just feels so ironic whenever you have like double, you have a overly draining turned on, you drink an adrenaline pot, and you do like a void breaker spec, and it's like this feels normal. <laughs> <laughs> true yeah it's uh, like canceling out yeah it's just it's just not good um i also want to if you have any thoughts on that pug and i don't know if yeah uh, you have any like yeah I, I would like to see like more mechanical indications like lake said like even like insanity too where yes that's what even no it's like again. insanity yeah. but we mean it this time <laughs> <laughs> yeah just just call like it completely insanity. random yeah just you got to call it something extreme you probably even do one tick attack with like random random uh quadrants not mm. quadrants but you know what i mean i feel like the uh well just i don't exactly know what the randomization you're thinking of is i think the randomness would actually almost be a point where like this is it is changing things up and it's making it more difficult but i actually like the consistency with certain attacks no monkey had he he had like spewed a bunch of ideas for like what could be like the the quant. I always just call it quant. Anything that's more difficult, I just call it quantum now because I think it's just funny to just put that word in front of anything for no reason. But um, the quantum insanity would be like you you got Zebac waves going like midway through and and those continue and then uh, I I think one of the things No Monkey really wanted and you guys probably agree with this is like the fact that the Baba boulders don't even have any effect for when you're still running skulls and stuff like like you're dodging uh the main warden and there's literally no reason to even look at where the boulders are falling because you always dodge them as long as you're just in cycle with warden i didn't even think about that yeah it's like this, yeah this is i uh hard. 
I've thought about that before, but didn't really think too much into it because I was like, oh, the reason that sucks is because actual Baba sucks. Because that's just the same timing as actual Baba. Yeah, yeah. Like how uh, if your Baba's level three or higher, then uh, you're automatically going to, like if you're doing red X, that is, you're automatically going to dodge that rock every time, like without even doing anything. Mm -hmm. So it's just like double pointless then. Yeah, what, so they made a change as well in the monkey room before Baba. Where now, oh, that one is so much fun. Yeah, the monkeys yeah. explode. Ha has anybody come out with like a crazy meta for that? Like there's got to be some just crazy strats, right? Uh, I don't know about like meta, but what I've been doing and what I've seen done a lot is mainly just leaving alive everything that's meleeing you. So the thralls and the brawlers. Uh, <laughs> Still prioritize shamans as much as you can, but if you have like a sh if you if you have a shaman and a volatile spawn the same way, if you want to try to bring the volatile over to you and pop all the meleers on you and the shaman, and then uh, prioritize the majors and rangers whenever they spawn because um, they're gonna do a lot of damage to you now with the faster waves if you're not praying from them. Mm. Yeah, it seems cool. I'm really glad that Jagex just decided to just have have the volatile balloons just blow them up like entirely, not just do damage. When it was like when it was being pulled or whatever, I I didn't have my hopes up. I was like, okay, that's gonna be like a small little niche change, gonna change like two waves. It's probably not gonna make the room feel any better. Mm -hmm. But I was I was so surprised. Like first time trying the room was like, holy shit, man. <laughs> and I uh, I was like horrible at it too. It was like didn't have the right spots on the volatile or, volatile or anything, or I would like drag the monkeys out of the box mm. so it wouldn't get blown up and all that. But um. Like every time I, I've done that room since then, like I've had fun with it and it's just flown by because like I'm actually paying attention to it and stuff now. Oh, that's so good. That, that's a I also, Yeah, go for it. Sorry. Um, I thought it was just going to be like a maybe 30 damage. I didn't think it was just going to nuke every yeah. monkey. <laughs> it's so <laughs> it was cool. kind of cool. It's just a, it's such a positive change. Like, yes, it if somebody was like a, a super purist, like, no, don't touch like my room. Like that's supposed to be, like, no. First of all, nobody thought that, but like. I don't know. It's it's just good to be really open minded about a very positive change that like we can look at all the benefits and just be like, yes, some maybe some TOA world records are gonna be devalued because of this change, but like for the greater good, this is just overall positive. Makes the room quicker, makes it more engaging, adds a little bit more strategy. I thought it was yeah. great. I do kind of wish uh... the waves were static like Nyla. Yeah, th there has been people that have suggested that. I wouldn't be against it. My only gripe was, uh, I felt I felt like that entire change really should have been an invocation, but that just goes into like a basket full of other things that should have been invocations, like Aka and Rage intensity. Like I, I think the diagonal orbs on Aka and Rage should have been uh, an invocation, and just yes. like the ones that go like east, west, and north, south should have been yes. like the default. True, yeah. Because when you, right now when you go to entry mode, like pretend this is like your first like two months playing the game, and you. <laughs> have decided to make one of the rage your goal and you're trying to do entry mode <laughs> and um you're, so you're doing all these like insanely easy bosses they do like no damage like they're really just punching bags on entry mode yeah. but then you get you get to the monkey room and it's fast and you're getting blown up by this monkey that you don't even know what it does yet and then <laughs> aka and rage is just insane for entry mode like yeah. relative difficulty you know totally yeah no you're... like those two things definitely should have been invocations but that, that goes with like an entire invocation overhaul yeah yeah you're right that would have been a really positive change. Um, yeah, that that would have actually been a, a very extreme change as well. Like if, if that was there from the beginning, so many people would never choose to have a diagonal come phase because it would just be seen as like, holy shit, this is out of control. Oh yeah, surely it'd be like a twenty point invocation or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been really cool, uh, really good. Yeah, um, th this is something like I had talked about this in years previous, like in the early BC Guppy casts and other like casts I had that I would talk about my desire for Raids 3 to have puzzles, like just quick puzzles. And now <laughs> it's funny because I've kind of like low key changed my stance, but I'd never really get, you know, um, that much airtime to express that stance. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of at the point where maybe just get rid of puzzles <laughs> entirely in future Raids. I because, completely agree. Because like they're, they feel as though they're just hindrances, especially the monkey waves. Yeah. Well, I think I think we all know that like, the puzzles were pretty much like 
or at least I theorized that the puzzles were pretty much based on like the ideas that you were pitching like I during know, the race development the, time I about know. like wanting like sepulchre style puzzles between rooms. Yeah. And I, I feel like the only one that actually hit that mark is Zebek. And people are not doing Zebek the way they wanted us to do it, but <laughs> yeah. the way we ended up doing it is the only one that hits that like sepulchre style. Like it is kind of fun to try to do like every tick perfect, but like we're all gonna use the plugin and stuff. Yeah. No, they, they really, they, it's funny because like I was actually pleasantly surprised like on release. I was like, oh shit, like kefri has got like this really cool puzzle room where you just go down and, you know, click your little things and, but there's something, it, it would be cool if, you know, and the, again, this would be like a, a complete invocation overhaul where it's just like, okay, do you want puzzles? You can just turn them on for like an additional hundred or whatever invocation. If you just want to make the raid just annoying. For your own sake or you can just have a way faster and just go to the bosses immediately again though this I, I don't think anything needs to change i just think in the future maybe it would be best to just go the top route and just have you know whatever amount of bosses there you go here's the layout go hit boss basically mm -hmm. by the way what is your guys's favorite raid now uh that there's three of them out i know lakes like probably knows mine. <laughs> yeah. You want to answer for me, and I'll answer for you. Lakes is Chambers, and then TOA, and then TOB. I mean, yeah, that's pretty close. Is it not uh, right? Is, uh, it's got some like specifics to it, you know, like asterisks. Okay. Yeah. Puggins is uh, TOB over Chambers over TOA. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I'll say, though, like solo Chambers kind of has a special place in my heart. It's it's For sure. I don't know. But yeah, I I think TOB would probably be the first. So these days for me, I I do say TOA is my favorite like overall raid. Um Chambers is always going to be like my favorite content in the game pretty much, but that's because of the own fight, honestly. Um all the other rooms do eventually get stale and sometimes there's like minor optimizations that you can make to like spice it up a little bit. But then eventually it always ends up being like the same thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, like as much as I love Chambers, I do have to knock it for the fact that half of its combat rooms are AFK and wait for the monster to die. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, Chambers seems... it's it. First of all, I gotta say, it's really cool that like there is um, opinions, like very strong opinions against certain things. Like it's it's actually crazy we don't live in a uh, a game or like a a reality where the game is like, oh no, everybody likes raids three the most. And it's just objective. It's just like, no, we all like this. It's like, no, there's, there's opinions to every single raid. Like some people really, really love TOA. They think it's their absolute favorite. It's like the most polished in people's opinions. And, uh, it, it's hard to say for me because like, I would probably say chambers is my favorite, but that's like, there's so many asterisks. Like you said, like, it's just like, yeah. I, I First of all, something fundamental. Uh, I'm gonna actually just talk about this uh, in a second after I just say I'm, I want to hear your guys' opinions on like scouting and the future changes they're making to chambers. But yeah, chambers. The the Ulm fight's amazing. Tob was so much fun with as long as you get like a team going. The problem is like I never had and Puggin had it way worse than I did to be fair. But like I never had a lot of experience with scything TOB. I just was like whipping and pugging obviously had it like almost twice as bad as <laughs> I did, but love, uh, which is surprising because it's actually your favorite raid and you had to literally suffer. <laughs> but, uh, and then I think TOA for me, just, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. The reason I like TOB so much is like, even after all I've done, there's still so many optimizations that you can like get better at. Like duo Nyla waves, for example, there's just so much depth and I don't know, it's just really fun to like try to get perfect at and like so to say maze skipping, there's a whole ass chart I'll send right now. It's, it's like it. I don't know, it's it's kind of refreshing to like still be like learning new things after so long. Mm -hmm. I think a big part of that depth comes from... Uh like the varying team sizes so every single different scale is going to have different methods different uh roles different setups yeah i feel like that's a big part of all that depth agreed what are your guys' thoughts on like just overall well I, I know i said i'd cover the chamber scouting but this first um 
overall thoughts on invocation system being added to what is supposed to be, at least in my mind and a lot of other people's minds, an end game raid. Do you think it's appropriate for, and, and I'm mainly just talking like for the future, like do, do you think it's good for the future of the game for the what's supposed to be the end game raid to have an invocation system that allows everybody at level 50 combat and higher to just go and enjoy this new piece of content? Or would it be better to go like the TOB route where it's like, nah, everyone fucking sucks at this and like only the best are going to get like kills. <laughs> I'd go the TOB route any day. <laughs> it's a bit selfish, but like new players, they have their own content. I, I think end game players should also have their own content. And you should have something to like want to work towards. It shouldn't just be like given to you. What do you think, Lake? Um, I would say a little bit of both, really, to the point where, uh, like, I, I like the invocation system in the way that, like, you can make the raid more challenging and get more rewarded for it, but I do find it kind of weird that you can literally just, like, pick and choose mechanics you like or don't like and take them off, be like, oh, nope, don't want that. I, I, I think it's some, I think it worked out well for TOA, especially because it gives it that kind of, like, learning curve for it. But I think in future raids that uh, I'd rather just see like entry mode and normal mode pretty much. Yeah. I mean, uh, they've been doing like hard mode in all the raids too, I guess. But uh, I'd like to see hard mode actually be rewarding. Like for the first two raids, neither of the hard modes are like the, the most efficient thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, I, unless you count like Verzik pet, I guess. Mm. I, I think... This is, you know, based on a bunch of different conversations I've had. I think, like, the invocation system would be really great for more kind of mid to high level content. Like, I think they're planning on coming out with a little bit of, like, a a dungeon or something, like a mid-game dungeon that kind of helps teach mechanics, in a sense. Like, that would be a great place to have, like, an invocation system, personally. It's, like, not the end game. Like, this isn't, like, your best-in-slot range armor, your best-in-slot mage weapon. Your be like, all the best-in-slot rewards are coming from this that has an invocation system. I think it would be better to be more mid-level. But, and and in the future, I think TOB kind of nailed it, where, it's like, there is just the, the default mode, which is very difficult on release, well, it's supposed to be. Then you have the challenge mode and then entry mode. And I think if they were to release Raids 4, in my perfect world... It would be on release, all there is is maybe just even normal mode, if that's easier. But I would be okay with normal mode and challenge mode, just on release. And mm -hmm. then, like, two to, you know, six weeks later, whatever, like, the team decides, then you release entry mode. And it's like, okay, like, this was super, super hype content. A lot of people are just watching, like, holy shit, like, Wooks and, and the boys are completing these things. And then later down the line, after the hype kind of dies down, it's like, okay, now we're going to release entry mode to get people to engage in the content. But that's, again, like, there's a business decision behind it. It's probably like, now, just fuck it, yeah. just bring entry mode immediately. But I agree with that. Yeah, I think, uh, like, in hindsight, I think if they did, like, that kind of timing, it would have made TOB entry mode actually good on release. Because, like, TOB entry mode comes out, what, two, two years after the raid came out or something like, like that? I really years. don't remember. Four years? Yeah, three or four yeah, years. It came, out way, it came out way down line, yeah. way down the line after the raid came out. And then when it came out, it, it did nothing to actually help you learn TOB. It, it was just like like all the attack speeds were different. Like yeah. just baby all they mode. had to do was like lower dam like make mistakes not as punishing pretty much, but keep mechanics the same. Yeah. Yeah. But if, if if the purpose of it is to help you learn the real raid. Yeah, but totally. uh, like with doing it with that kind of two-week timing, they can release the raid, see what kind of mechanics are giving players the most trouble whenever they're learning, and then emphasize those mechanics in the entry mode version. Be like, okay, like this random pushback mechanic is something that is really screwing everyone over in the regular raid. So we need to make that something that's like super lenient in entry mode so that people can actually like practice that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be a great way to go about it. We have also <laughs> seen... Sorry, go for it. Uh, I was going to say that uh, that adds on to like something else that uh, I would say is a good thing about TOA is uh, you're able to practice it however you want. You can just load up a room and practice it as much as you want by turning off death invocations. So it makes it like super learner friendly in that sense. Yeah. 
Yeah, and and don't get me wrong. I think actually the, there's been a, a huge net positive with the TOA release. I think it just got so many people into PVM and they're starting to realize like, okay, raids are really something I can do. I, f I feel like with Chambers release, like I, I was under the impression when Chambers was first released because I was kind of like a, a little bit newbie or iron. I was so intimidated of that place. I was like, there's no way I'm going in there because I just have no idea what I'm doing. Everything's brand new. It just seems confusing. The mechanics are crazy. Same with Inferno. Just like this place is way too hard. But as soon as you get that like first deep dive into something that you thought was really hard, you're like, oh, okay, I can I can experience other pieces of content now. And I think TOA really gave that taste to just a huge plethora of players. So I think overall it's like a net positive. It, it got a lot of people excited about like the future of PVM because now they can actually participate in it. Um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. I feel like, uh, I feel like in the current like age of the game, even people who are like just now picking up the game, they're uh, they're already like somewhat familiar with like the complexity of the game. Like they know about like the tick system and stuff. Like it, it, it's common knowledge at this point. Like everyone talks about it. Like even people who just started playing and compare that to like years ago where like you would have people that are like 2000 total and they, they like they couldn't tell you what a game tick is. And I feel like in that kind of uh, era of the game, like it kind of it kind of made people like fearless. You know what I mean? Like you'd be willing to like jump into like any kind of encounter because you, you didn't really know how complex it could be. Mm hmm. And uh, and now like newer players like they know about things like the inferno and stuff even though like they're nowhere near touching it they know about this kind of stuff and it, I feel like it can be intimidating. Yeah, no, and I, let me also just push back just lightly on the fact that like I, I feel like so have you seen the Parks and Rec meme of I think Andy is the guy who's like I don't I don't know what you're talking about but I'm too scared to ask at this point. I feel like the yeah. tick, I feel like the tick system is almost like that. Like there there it actually is a pretty large section of the player bikes that probably aren't like even in raids but they hear everybody just talking about ticks so openly and freely they're like i have no idea what this is but i'm too scared to ask at this point because <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be honest like we've all we three have played for uh, you know i don't want to just push a number on you but i've been playing this game for like you know over twenty thousand hours and so everything just seems like oh like of course but i do remember a time in my first thousand hours of playing where the tick system made zero sense even when people were trying to explain it to me it just like flew over my head it was yeah so i, I try to remember that like yeah but you are right when the overall consensus at least in just mid and high level players they do understand so much more than we did eight years ago yeah so um, Chambers has been getting some changes and one of them is in regards to scouting and they want to like release some sort of like token. I can't remember all the words they had. I don't know if you guys read those blog posts, but they're, they, they want to add some changes that make the scouting process a little bit more convenient. Um, so do you guys have any thoughts on that? I can explain it a little bit more if you guys didn't even read the blog post on that. But I did not read it. Okay, well, the main thing, I believe, is that at the end of a raid, you can get a token that can purchase, like, a free scout or something. And oh. it's, it's just something to make it so, like, you you get rewarded, and then, okay, here, you can buy a free scout. My personal problem with it is, like, I just feel like we don't even need to go down that route. I feel like we could just get to a point where you should just be able to scout or where, where scouting is not even a thing anymore. You just set up the raid exactly as you want. And I know that I think, sounds extremely OP, but I'm just like, yeah. I don't know. I think being able to pick like, just do VTB crab rope, like every single raid. I don't think you should be able to do that, but I think maybe picking like, uh, Maybe like a minimum of like three different layouts to, uh, I don't know. The, I just feel like spamming VTBs would be kind of. Well, my concern is that I, like, I want to fully get rid of scouting. I just think it's so stupid. It just involves you having to log into another account if you want to be efficient or have some other players scouting for you. And yeah. even if we had something where it's like, okay, like we've cut down the time of the randomization so you could still get these. I just feel like just cut out all that bullshit and let's just 
see with fresh eyes what this could be. If like I, I honestly don't think Chambers like Chambers is not a new raid anymore. It's not like we need to. I, I just feel like certain things about Chambers can be devalued, and those items you get from Chambers are so rare. Like a Tebow's like five hundred hours for most mm -hmm. just average player. And like, that's ridiculous. I feel like if you could just get your perfect VTV now, of course the layout itself would just be somewhat randomized, you know, like you wouldn't get the exact room order you want. Um, but you would still just get those. I, I just feel like, yes, these are the rooms I want. Let's go. No more bullshit. Just get me into the goddamn raid and let's finish this. And I feel like if we could just wrap our heads around that and just be like, okay, this is appropriate at this point in the game. You know, it's almost 2024. We could just move on instead of just adding weird tokens and things. Like with TOB, you just go in and you know exactly what you're getting and nobody has a problem yeah. with it. I personally would rather have them like fully rebalance the other rooms that people are never going to touch if that goes through. Like yeah, make ice steam in the same time as rope skipping. Like mm -hmm. if they did that, then you really wouldn't need the... You really wouldn't need scouting. Like if you add overloads to more bosses and enhances and just like kind of rebalance the time of every room, it would be better in my opinion. Yeah. What about yeah, you? Yeah, I just I just find it so funny that like the instant solution that they offer for people not being happy with certain rooms and wanting to avoid doing those rooms in their current state is not to change their current state, it's to give you a free pass. <laughs> yeah. It's and literally like any an kind of like devaluement board. sense. Like I, I definitely agree. Like chamber stuff is so much more rare and compared to like newer raid stuff. And um, like it, it could honestly use being devalued a little bit. But um, I, I don't know. I just find it kind of lame that like that that's our solution. We're gonna just get like skip me tokens for specific rooms. Whenever we could, like in a perfect world, have everything reworked to where like if you want to be at max efficiency, you're walking in the door and doing that raid immediately. Yeah, yeah. Because it will never be worth it to look for another one. Mm -hmm. And like, so I don't like, like a, the a few idea. Rooms they have tackle for that. Yeah, sorry. I don't like the idea of just kind of getting rid of eighty percent of the rooms and just doing one layout. Like, I, my, yeah, no, no. That that's a fair argument. I think in my head, I think okay, there's such thing as challenge mode raids, which forces you to do all the rooms. So there still is normal chambers. And I, I feel like if you could just pick and choose exactly what you want in normal chambers, like eventually, if, if you're a brand new player and eventually you want to get to challenge mode, occasionally you're going to want to throw in some other rooms just to learn them kind of because your end goal would be to, I don't know, get a dust or something at challenge or get the kits at challenge mode, which forces you to do all the rooms. I just feel like with basic chambers at this stage, Yes, rooms definitely need to be like looked at. Like I feel like one of the things is like the thieving room. Why in the hell at 99 thieving with a lockpick, those things are still 50% chance of getting grubs. Like Yeah, it never changes. Like what the fuck is happening? Like can we just make it 100% at 99? Like <laughs> like I know that would kill speedrun records and people would have to do their records again, but like it would just make the thing so much smoother if just every single time you loot a chest, you are guaranteeing at least one grub. Like, just come on. Yeah. Like, for example, I did the Valiance Diary recently, mm -hmm. and there was a clip in my video of Dorv going 0 out of 14 and thieving, and it oh just threw the rug. Oh, my God. Yeah, that yeah. is just so rough. It's just so stupid, dude. Yeah. And they, they made thieving better already. Like, it used to be one grub. <laughs> like, it, I don't know. It's still so bad. Yeah, there just needs to be a few changes. Uh, ice demon as well, and this is this is the really tough part with balancing chambers, is that there is this illusion I'm under, and it's hard for me to break that. Is like I always think of chambers as solo. Like I always watch people doing solo CMs and solo variants of these things. I forget that there is like up to a hundred players on these balance. Like it's actually so much more complex to balance these things when you can just have a ton of different players in but i feel like with certain things like the thieving room it's it wouldn't really make a difference if you just get a get a hundred percent success rate at 99 yeah i mean some things are uh some things just don't really make a lot of sense like like ice demon for example 
Uh, the big reason it's so bad on points is because I see it as that uh, damage negation, so it's gonna it's gonna lower the damage that you do, but then it's still gonna give you points based on the lower damage and not based on your original damage. So with it blocking, what is it like two thirds damage? You're getting two thirds the points by default just by doing the room period. <laughs> so dumb. Yeah. Yeah, it would be cool to like get you like. There's I'm not I shouldn't even be in this position like i'm i'm not the uh spokesperson of chambers there are so many people that know much more about the mechanics and much more about what good could come from chambers it would be cool if the j mods like got you both and a bunch of other chambers andes and just like not not calling you guys chambers andes but just you guys understand the fundamentals of the content and what would improve it just get get you guys into a call and just be like what can actually just healthily change this and make it fun not just I don't know, just making band, they're not, they're not even band-aid solutions. They're just weak solutions that don't hit the core mm -hmm. problem. I feel like, uh, I feel like one thing for chambers is that, um, like it's the first raid. It's from an era of the game where mechanics were the way they are. Like with next, for example, everything's really subtle. It's not like there's not some, like, I don't, I don't know. It's like, it's just not super obvious stuff. Like four to one is a really good example, you know, mm -hmm. just like more like subtle stuff like that. And, uh, so like what I'm rambling about that for is I think on top of all these like balancing changes that we were talking about, uh, chamber chambers doesn't have an entry mode, but I wouldn't want to see an entry mode. I would want to see chambers practice mode. So it's going to have the exact same scaling rules that a uh, normal chambers follows. And then what it's going to be is you can either pick a, a specific layout to do on that, or you can pick to go straight to Ulm and that's going to be how people can practice that. Oh, yeah. Because cool. I think a big thing for chambers would be making like those like really subtle methods more practicable. Because uh, I mean, you hear it all the time. That's something that put people off of trying to learn solo chambers all the time. Is that like everyone's telling them they have to like go through a whole raid and make all these potions and die with it over and over again. And like I, I think a lot more people would be more willing to try to tackle that if you could do practice mode and literally just load it up. Yeah. And on top of that, you would be able to use practice mode. The speedrunning community could use that to have like the established layout on there. Like surely at the end of the raid, it'll say you completed a practice raid with the layout, blah, 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 blah. So they could have like that verification and all that. And they could use the practice mode as their speedrunning. So that scouting doesn't like affect that. True. True. Yeah. Whenever, whenever people are like asking about Ohm, I just tell them to get the Ohm and just practice and suicide over and over and just reset hands like that shouldn't really be the method i feel like so i think that well, would be really cool like it, it made sense at the time because it was the first raid and there wasn't anything like that but now like we have entry mode tob we have invocations for toa there's not been anything added to make chambers more accessible for learners yeah yeah you're right and i i feel like i feel like i like I don't know. I, I know like a big thing is like we want more in-game content and everything, but I, I think a way that we get more in-game content is getting more like newer players interested in in-game content and trying to get to that point. That way the in-game audience grows bigger and we have a louder voice then. And I think the way to do that is like throwing them a poem like we did with like TOA invocations. Yeah. Uh, I do think they messed up with uh, how rewarding the uh, entry mode is for TOA. Like TOB mm -hmm. definitely hit that better. And uh, I would want practice mode to be like no rewards. Like speedrunners are going to use it for speedrunning. They don't want anything. And uh, learners can use it to load up whatever specific room or ohm that they want. I'm curious uh, because in, in my head, this all makes perfect sense that I'm actually in full agreement. I just wonder now because I feel like we're all going to agree the opposite when it comes to Inferno. Like if there was an Inferno entry mode would that be healthy is it is the only reason it wouldn't be healthy i'm i'm just assuming you guys are going to say it's probably unhealthy like me but is the only reason we potentially think that is because they have an untradeable reward that's just a one-time thing it would be kind of this eh, well i, was I think say, it'd be healthy i think the i i think an inferno like speed running mode would be good for like the speed runners because i know tyrell skipping is like an issue with them but as far as the Inferno goes, I think the wave system is the entry mode. Like the sure. first few waves, like what we that have done it so many times consider like boring, like blah, 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 let's get it going. 
like if you were doing it for the first time like completely blind like that's your entry mode that's true. you're learning what this monster does what this monster does and they get paired together and then you have to throw this next one in the mix like the wave system is the entry mode i guess what i think is uh, yeah no you're totally right with the waves i guess i just think of like triple jads into zuck like zuck you just get absolutely no practice until you're just there and you've spent seven hours sg oh yeah but that's let's be real and anyone who actually like clears the waves and not by chance like they get the waves down to that point where they can clear it pretty much every time they're all going to agree that Zuck is not the hard part of the fight so that's kind of what right. adds that difficulty there and the reason that so many of us die there so much is the fact that like you're nervous about it because you can't practice that mm -hmm. I think uh, I think if I don't know I think it nerfs the difficulty a lot if you make, if you make that part of the fight practicable because it's the most important part of the fight and it's where you have the most time invested but it's not the hardest part Mm -hmm. so I was more. If thinking, you can practice that enough to where like you don't get nervous on that anymore, then where is the difficulty of that anymore? Yeah, I was more thinking like kind of basic things like you being able to spawn in a ranger and a blob and just kind of practice dealing with that. I don't think like a like a practice for Zuck would be good. I mean, there's already like little GitHub's to do that, but it's uh just like being able to add in different monsters and kind of practice how to deal with them i think that would be okay it, it would almost be cool to have like a sandbox uh like monster spawner where like you can create your own custom like <laughs> dungeon or something where it's like you just spawn random creatures from throughout the game and put them all into like one arena and yeah. you can add your own like pillars and stuff like a little creator like i don't i maybe in the future who knows 10 years from now you just custom make your stuff i, I always personally thought the um traditional grardor and zamorak and i guess a little bit of sarah as well like those those traditional methods were like you kill the boss then you got three different minions that are attacking on a five tick cycle and you're trying to you know click your piety or your rigor on time and just not losing prayer points i always thought it would be fun if that part of the fight lasted longer because, yeah we talked about that in our yeah. first cast I it's, remember that. It's we so wanted addicting. that in, in COA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. it's. I'm surprised you remembered that because I, I was like trying to think. I was like, did I talk to one of you about that? It's like that is literally the most fun part of the fight, and it lasts for seconds. And it's like ah, like you've already killed the third or like one of the minions, and now you're just kind of it's it's basic. But that is so fun once you understand the mechanics and you get that muscle memory down of having three different monsters attack you. You got to flick them properly. You got to turn on your offensives on the same tick. And, it's the uh, it's the polyrhythm. It's so cool. It's really it's really fun. And then you can apply those things, you know, like obviously an easier version of that is like DKs where you just have prime and um supreme. Is that what I'm thinking? Is that why does that not sound right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like thinking of like a Taco Bell burrito. I'm like what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah but like it's just i don't know i yeah i, that I, I also kind of yeah go for it sorry it also kind of goes hand in hand like if you if you get that specific thing down like one ticking with a rigor blowpipe flicking all three minions like that kind of would help you with awaken leviathan because it's kind of like totally yeah kind of in that not the same realm but it, it definitely helps you get there so yeah. there, uh, I want to kind of talk about the prices of items because we now see the detriment of potentially, you know, there's multiple factors on this, just item rarity in general and accessibility. But we see one of the most powerful rings of all time being, oh, let me just see the price of it. Is the light bearer 2 mil at this point? Let me look. I can check. 3.2 mil. Ooh. Yeah, so we got a really powerful ring that's less than what the uh, like Berserker ring was for a while from an endgame raid. And we also have a Fang, which is just absolutely cracked, <laughs> and that is worth 33 mil. Like, do you, what, what are you guys' thoughts on these items? Because I know we're Iron Man, but a lot of mains have a problem with the prices. Uh, for the Light Bearer, I think it's... I don't, I don't know, honestly. 
light bearer is one of those things that like everyone always talks about like how good it is and everything and then like the less informed players like the newer players they're gonna be like oh everyone says this ring is really good they're gonna buy a light bearer and they have like no special attack weapons or anything <laughs> like light bearer is one of those like I, I get asked all the time because I uh, I don't don't run like dehydration or anything. I don't have my void breaker yet. So when I'm doing TOA, I use a berserker ring and not a light bear. Cause like, what am I gonna do? Like BGS again halfway through the fight? Probably not. Mm -hmm. So like, I get I don't really get anything out of a light bear. And um, I, I see people all the time that like just don't have like spec weapons like that, and they're they're just like getting the light bear because everyone says it's good. And uh, so I, I feel like a I feel like a reason of it being so cheap might be that like maybe more people do actually realize that and they uh, don't like try to like buy it like early on like that. So it's, it gets pretty low priority. Like it's not something people are gonna buy until they have like the Dragon Claws, the Void Waker, stuff like that. Yeah. And then like that that just leads to all the rings getting dumped in there pretty much. I feel like. What about you, Puggin? And. Uh and I'll, I'll I'll get your take as well, Lake, on the Fang. Um. Damn, I don't really know. I I think Lake kind of said some good words. Same thoughts. And what, I don't have many words in my head. What about what about Fang for you both, Lake? You first. Fang. fang yeah. or, or uh, Fang, definitely. Like, I mean. I I say in hindsight, but people were saying this since like the day we got the drop raids. Honestly, before we got the drop raids, because it was pretty apparent it was the same raid as the ring pretty early, that um, they should have swapped the Fang and the Ward, because the Ward was pretty much destined to be out value one because they gave it a three mil out price, <laughs> two because of uh, the arcane like it's got the Bagasian boot problem, you know? Yeah. And. Um, so like the rarity of the fang in, in in my opinion is the biggest problem i know the fang is a hot topic in terms of like overtaking its niche like it's a really good slash weapon as well i don't really see it being a problem that it is good slash as well i think uh i think the whole fang debate kind of highlights the actual problem of melee in general being so inaccurate and uh, with fang being the only melee weapon that has any kind of like extra accuracy mechanic like that it shines because guess what not hitting zeros is good yeah so i i don't think the problem is I, like i don't think the solution is nerfing the fang and making melee go back to hitting zeros all the time especially now that we have the shadow because now you're definitely going to use ranger mage pretty much everywhere that you're not forced to use melee i i think uh i think the solution is more so working on the entire accuracy of melee in general uh whether that's buffing older items in terms of like how much accuracy they have or uh, going down the route of that and giving us more accuracy based melee armors mm. yeah like scythe being outshined by fang like on a slash boss i just doesn't sit right with me so i, I definitely agree like scythe and maybe i mean I, I feel like just scythe being buffed is a good start but i think you're right i feel like because you, you always see everyone overall. that's like oh i'm sorry no you're good i was i was pretty much done but you always see everyone that's like, oh, remove the slash option on the thing or make it where it doesn't get the double accuracy roll on the slash or like th there's been a million different suggestions for nerfing the thing. But I my my thing with that is like if we do that, OK, what well, everyone's going to go back to using the scythe, which is which would still be as good as it currently is, which is not good enough. <laughs> like it, it just highlights the problem that like melee in general isn't accurate enough, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is really is the core issue. It's like we, we anybody that's end game at this point has a scythe and a fang, and they've used them, and they realize, holy shit, using any other weapon besides these two feels horrible. Like it actually just using a rapier nowadays, it sh you just feel like you're using a Nerf toy. Like it's just what <laughs> what is this? It's just constantly missing. Yeah, speaking of accuracy, like there's no armor other than void melee that and inquisitors accuracy. i guess yeah i guess so but not very the ring was kind of a interesting ad because it's actually i mean it's only useful in like tob and like duke but it's a good it, start yeah it's it's gonna be interesting seeing the future of melee weapons because i think the team understands as well like as soon as you get an item that feels very consistent and powerful you never want to go back 
and that the fang i mean the scythe especially but the scythe had a, a pretty expensive charge to it the fang being completely free and just okay like this feels phenomenal to use i'm never missing and i'm never even hitting ones or twos through like eights basically i just it just feels I feel really like solid i feel like almost everyone would say the two most satisfying melee weapons to use are the fang and the void waker oh yeah and they got one thing in common <laughs> Yeah, just that minimum hit, right? Of uh, the accuracy. So board breakers guaranteed accuracy on yeah, the minimum yeah, yeah. hit. Oh, yeah. And then That's the right. thing's double roll. Because if, if the Void Waker was, you could still hit a one or a two, that wouldn't feel as, yeah. as good. But yeah, that minimum roll, I think, also really helps. This is random, but what do you guys think of like Corruptible Scythe for like Ella Blood Runes and like Corruptible Shadow? this is I mean, you're gonna open a can of worms with this because like this, this goes really deep into uh just what the core problem with charged weapons are and unlimited weapons are in general like i feel like we're continuing like we've our game is in a state of in my opinion a little bit of chaos where like we, we've just added so much like splatters of paint everywhere we're just trying to like you know build off of what we've already splattered everywhere on this canvas yeah. and but i feel like if we take a step back and look at like the fundamentals like in my personal opinion i don't think things should ever like if something has a cost to use i don't think and it, it should ever become unlimited that's just my personal take but i think we should get to the point where it's as convenient as possible to upkeep those charges so like if there's any charged weapons, make it be a hundred thousand charges. Don't force you to go to a certain location to charge it. Just allow you to charge wherever, whenever, and that kind of fixes that problem for the most part. Like, don't when, put an uncharged button that makes you lose literally everything if you yeah. press it just because yeah. you're not in the right place. <laughs> yeah, and and this is one of my takes I've had recently. Like, I, I used to be pretty pro. I still am pro charged best in slot weapons in general because I think there should be a cost to using something. And if people listening disagree with that, I, I just want you to imagine. Imagine TOB came out and the scythe was entirely free to use. I feel like that would have been a detriment to the game. Just allowing an item to be completely free to use from the get go, extremely powerful. It, it just like that doesn't. That that is not good for the balancing of weapons to just come out with something absolutely like thirty percent to fifty percent more DPS and it's just entirely free to use. So my concern is mainly for the future of weapons. Of if we come out with like a raids four that has new best and slot melee weapons, like I I'm scared that if they're entirely free to use, they're just completely devaluing these other items that take just as many hours to obtain which is another topic in and of itself. Like how, like, how are we going to balance the future of raids and the future of new items? Because like, you can't just keep continually pushing more hours on these items and, and nobody really wants to have attachment scape. Some people do, but not me. Um, I've stated a little bit of, but I want to hear uh, Lake's thoughts, I guess, before I go on to like another 10 minute tangent on other things. So what are your thoughts on the, the uh, corruptible? So on corrupted, corrupted what for me? Um, I'll say flat out, like, for magic, because I know Corbin mentioned the shadow. I, uh, I definitely am not on board with, like, corrupted magic stuff. Like, uh, I, I think, I think magic should always require, require runes. Like, that's what they're for. Mm -hmm. So if any of the weapons make sense to, like, have a rune, a rune charge cost, then I, I would say the magic one, especially. Uh, Scythe, it's kind of a hard one, because... Uh, like as of now, like yeah, the site doesn't get very much use because there are places where it's like a like a minor best in slot, but it's so expensive to use. I I don't really know if the best pro if the best solution is uh making it corruptible because I would assume if they make it corruptible, it'd be like the Bofa where it's an insane like overcharge fee to the point where like most people realistically won't get anywhere near using that amount of charges. So that won't really do anything for making the site cheaper. And uh, the common complaint does seem to be people don't want to be like not profiting at a boss because they're choosing to use the scythe when it's only like 10% better than the next alternative for whatever reason. I, I feel like uh, maybe a, a cheaper uh, scythe charge cost as well as uh, more convenient, like you were saying. 
not having to go to the well and all that. Yeah. Yeah, like three bloods, like just every five ticks, it's just like 14, 50 GP. I guess it's a little less now, but. Yeah. I mean, really, it could, it could be one blood per swing. I, I feel like it wouldn't even be bad. Yeah. Blood, like, blood runes are at out price, anyways. Yeah, especially for the Store rarity. Price. Like, man, it took me, what, two years to get my scythe? And, <laughs> like, I don't That's know. Ridiculous. Um, okay, so I just want to cross this by you what what do you guys both think of and this is this opinion of mine has been kind of formulated over the past several months even like up to a year but i used to be kind of thinking like uh, let me just say i don't think at this point melee weapons should even ever be charged with runes now i know thematically it, it kind of like i guess you can kind of make the argument that yes like a scythe makes sense to have blood runes but at this point i'm just thinking what if we with best and slot melee weapons in particular, so a scythe and potential potentially fang, we could talk about that later. But like the future of melee weapons from raids four, raids five, and things, just have a GP charge cost. Now I know the thematics of that don't really make sense, but I'm just imagining if we have a super powerful weapon that comes out, most players in general especially iron players don't want to skill to upkeep pvm items they just want to pvm but they still can appreciate balancing of weapons and having you know costs associated for the most part um and i was just thinking like what if we got to a stage where you know you go to your poh you use your armor stand where you would normally charge like your barrows items or just make them non-degradable first of all i also want to state this make this very clear i am against charged armor i do not want charged or degradable armor um at all i just want this to be focused mainly on just the best of the best melee weapons where you go to your armor stand you have a coffer there you can store your gp in there and you just charge up your weapon in a sense so it's not degradable it's the opposite where you can charge it up with as many as you want and it's just a gp cost so now the irons that are concerned about like my gp has no use now it does have use. It's the most universal resource. And I feel like it just almost makes sense. And then you can really come out with extremely powerful items that do have just a high cost. And we can balance that later. You know, like if, if, if a scythe just costs, you know, a mil GP per constant hour of use. Like, what, would that be appropriate? Like, what, what are you guys' thoughts on that in general? And I would want to hear some backlash if you guys have any. I mean, I know you're asking for backlash, but I, I like the idea of uh, coins being like currency for charge cost. Uh, main reason is because it gets rid of a lot of balancing issues between the different game modes that we have. So like uh, getting getting a, a specific item on an ultimate Iron Man versus an Iron Man versus a hardcore versus a main, uh, whatever item is used as that currency, like it's going to be different to get for everybody. So at that point, it's going to have a lot more balancing that needs done because everyone's getting different results. So like Blood Runes for the site, they're balanced around like how much they, they cost at the time. But then uh, back then, we didn't have true Blood Altar. We didn't have a, a Runecrafting Outfit, Guardians of the Rift, like any of that stuff, let alone the Scar, you know? Yeah. So like that was a pretty obvious balancing issue. That was just because of like being between two different game modes, really. Mm-hmm. But coins or something, I feel like would have an easier carryover. What about you, Corey? I, I feel like most people would agree coins are pretty abundant on uh, Iron Man. Yeah. Plus, you can obtain GP through all means. Like you can literally just upkeep it through more PVM. You can also upkeep it through skilling if you choose to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can agree I, with that. I think if like in, if the scythe was already charged with coins, we probably wouldn't even have a scar right now. No, we yeah. wouldn't, and that, I don't think anyone would have asked for it because it wouldn't have been a, like we would we wouldn't need that that insane amount of blood runes. Exactly, and I think like just trying to figure out the core problem of these things, like I am, I'm not gonna lose sleep over the Scar Essence release. I think it's like okay, yes, we already had shops, and this is just some way to generate. <laughs> uh, for, okay, like, I'm not gonna go into this too <laughs> deeply, but like the I'm. <laughs> Not a huge fan of the Scar Essence, but I understand why people want it because people, like, there is a fundamental issue with just how low of runes you can craft per hour and that it funds the most fun weapons in the game to use 
and people don't want to skill like they just want to do their pvm and just thrive so if it was if we could just figure out like okay gp could solve this issue entirely where you're not forced to do one particular skill to upkeep this um yeah i feel like just for the future of the game that would be really beneficial and then yeah we don't need to add really silly masking of shopscape into a uh, uh a skill like oh my god have you guys done any of the scar essence i'm doing it um, right yeah. now <laughs> <laughs> like it, it literally i never like room crafting traditionally now is just gonna feel horrible like i spent that hour crafting 300 plus blood runes i'm like 300k plus blood runes and i'm like okay that felt that dopamine hit hard like really hard and i kind of wish blood essence like actually scaled with it because i'm so betty but I, I think that's a little copium yeah, I mean, yeah, this is... At this point, if they were to come out with a really, really healthy room crafting update where, you know, there's balancing behind it and everything and we can craft like 30,000 blood runes per hour, nobody, can, nobody is going to give a fuck because it's just like, dude, there's a way to already craft 10 times that with this. Now I know there would be... I, I know there's a GP cost behind this and and, and I understand that. Um. I don't know. There's just something really odd about that whole update. And I'm scared for the future of similar things happening. I don't think, I don't necessarily think this is a snowball effect by any means, like a slippery slope or whatever, but I think this was really just a one-time thing, but I feel like this could have been entirely avoided if we could have just made a simpler change and just decided. It's funny because... It's funny because I like the scar mine, but I think our, our difference in opinion is entirely on uh, our perspectives. So we, we both want the same end result. We both want to turn coins into blood runes, but well, I that, feel like that's what you're wanting... Not, not what I want, but yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. But uh, I feel like what you're wanting is uh, like a, a less of a band-aid fix for sure. Like you're wanting like the, the root problem address where... Uh, like getting the blood runes is better period with without having to rely on the shops and the way it, like my perspective is i look at it compared to what we have in the game and what we have dealt with in the game for the last i'm gonna say five years i guess since blood runes have been like a problem really yeah has well, been uh like shops being the shops being the way so i my perspective i see it as like this is the replacement for shops so that makes me happy for it but i can see how like you're seeing it as it's a band-aid solution and you'd rather see like the actual problem address. Yeah, that, that's definitely the case. And to be honest, I'm not like what, what you stated, my opinion isn't entirely incorrect because like I made a video, I am per like if, if, if I could make the game my way, it would be just eliminate, eliminate just having shops be best for buying any resource on an Iron Man. I just, I don't like that as a fundamental Iron Man feature, but it's not to just say, and don't do anything else. It would be simply address rune crafting as an issue. Like clearly we're not being able to craft enough runes. And that would also be another fundamental issue of the scythe even being charged with the runes in the first place. Like we could just address that because everybody wants to scar essence mine because of the scythe. Like that is the, the one thing that, and I guess a sanguinesti potentially, but for most people, it's just the scythe. So if we just figure out what the core problem, why everybody wants this, it would be that. And, but I am willing to concede if every single Iron Man in the game or like the vast majority want to be able to use their money to buy runes. Like if, if, if people are totally on board with that and be, because I'm against that personally, mm -hmm. but I am willing to concede that if people want that, then why couldn't we have just, instead of just, making the weirdest room crafting change of all time why couldn't we have just said okay we all agree that our gp should be able to fund runes and we hate having to hop worlds we hate having to compete with other iron men this is bad gameplay okay just have a fucking buy x then like go to a shop once buy x there you go you've converted your gp into runes and you don't have this strange and i'm gonna say private server i know everyone hates me for saying something's private servery because it's you know maybe overused term but it's just i don't know uh and i know you actually had great pushback on my just memeified idea of the whole uh 
Oh, the gold, gold, gold buying. But like, and, and I know like the balancing is not the same, but like just imagine you could just deposit 100 mil into a singular gold rock and then just like sit there and mine it for like the next hour and generate like 30,000 gold. Like just, just. That'd be sick. It, it's just, it's one of those <laughs> things. It's one of those things like even bringing up the idea, people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I want that. Like low key, they would actually just go ham on that because clearly, you know, that would just be fucking awesome but that's that's what it's like playing a main account you just buy stuff but yeah um the concern is like iron man mode was designed around self-sufficiency like you, you're doing you're doing things by yourself like you, you have to go the hard way and it's just really concerning that we have this iron man mode that's supposed to be the more like you know quote unquote prestigious mode that you have to do everything yourself and we're just like, nah, just turn it into main man mode at this point. And I'm just like, ugh, like, god damn it. Yeah, I do think like an actual just I know they just buffed her in crafting with like the outfit and stuff, but I think that would be more Iron Man esque to like actually have a decent amount of runes per hour. For sure. Rather than just being able to dump 150 mil into a little extractor and then make 20 times runes. I don't know. 60. <laughs> 60 times. Is it 60? It's 60. I'm like, where did that number even come from? Like, brother, like this could have been 20. Like this could have been 10x. This could have literally been 5x. But the the problem is they could they quoted it at 60x. And so like if, if anything were to have changed from the proposal, everyone would have been really disappointed because anything that's lower than 60x is going to just feel like, oh, you nerfed it. Like, God damn it. I'm like, where did that figure come from? It's just ridiculous. But the whole concept is a little bit ridiculous in my head. But I, I'm not going to lose too much sleep over it, mainly because it seems like most players are just totally okay with shops being in the game and being able to buy stuff in general using GP. And so it's, the game doesn't revolve around me, and I have to accept that. Yeah, I mean, I... I um uh, I would still say that I like the scar mine. Like I'm happy with the update. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I guess, I guess I just look at it a lot more like simple. Like I I look at it as the alternative is just continue shopscape like we have. Like I I definitely agree. Like in a perfect world, the uh, we would have like the root of the problem addressed, and there would be like some more runecrafting based solutions. But the established thing that's been in the game for so many years and even predates the runecrafting skill itself has been buying runes. Yeah. And so, uh, you're right. Uh, yeah. I'm I, sorry. Yeah. I, basically I'm just saying that like, I I'm happy with it as an alternative to shopping. Yeah. No, and maybe, it, maybe not as much as like the, the grand solution that we're all hoping for, but compared to scar assets, by not being in the game and the only viable alternative being shopping, I I'd definitely rather have the mine. Totally. Yeah, and it, it seems like the only backlash I've gotten is about that. This is not to be, you know, rude or anything, but it is that surface level argument. Like we, without even seeing the deeper issue, we just see this as like, no, this is clearly better than hopping worlds and buying runes. But I'm, I'm looking way beyond that. Like, okay, there's other fundamental issues and it's hard for me to totally express myself and like illustrate my points. But like, I totally understand where people are coming from when they just compare it to what the current best and slot way of getting runes are and what they imagine every single Iron Man is doing, which is just buying runes. And yeah, like this clearly fixes that. It makes it more enjoyable to do. And but yeah, so I, I definitely understand when people just bring up that surface level point. I totally concede that this is a better solution to just that. Okay, uh, Flomple asks, if you had to delete one skill from OSRS, what would it be? Also, GZ on being cool, all of you. I'll start with Sick. you, Corbin. One skill. Um, would it be bad mojo to say runecrafting? <laughs> you can say whatever. Is that the skill you hate Honestly, most? Honestly, uh, I mean, Sepulchre's chill, but like, it's still kind of... It'd be between Agi. Probably Agi. Okay. Yeah. Mm, fire making. <laughs> True, that shit is useless. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really think of that. It is you do fire making to do fire making. <laughs> it's such a strange 
skill. At least like, let us set cities on fire, bro. Like some arson. I don't know. <laughs> Just, like the whole basis of it was like the Gower Brothers. Like Tutorial Island was the basis of fire making. Yeah, <laughs> that was yeah. like the whole reason for putting it in the game. Like they wanted you to cook on a fire. Yeah, it's, I think one of the one of the coolest things they've done in regard like literally the only cool thing they've done with fire making is added like those um eternal flames in like those areas like, yeah the, it, it gives a use like it feels thematic like there's there's areas that become enhanced because of your fire making which i think but i cool. also feel like my game immersion wouldn't be any worse if it just had like a construction requirement and it was like <laughs> yeah. okay this was a level to build it and any three-year-old could light it by clicking <laughs> light <laughs> You're totally right. Like there's literally... without having years and years of fire making experience. I'm, I I was a scout growing up, and I just remember like you know learning how to start a fire with very limited resources and stuff. I'm like, dude, like you you understand how to build a fire, and that's it. You don't need to do this for the next two hundred hours. <laughs> like you're like you're good. Yeah, interesting. It, I mean, fire making even now. No, you're totally right. It does not need to be a skill. That just it's almost like just the just learning it's almost like just learning how to chisel a gem like imagine you had a chisel skill where instead of just like no this is just part of crafting you're just chiseling it it's like no you have to get your chiseling level up and your crafting level up to now you know chisel a diamond it's like dude i've i've learned the skill of chiseling like i've learned i've learned how to strike a tinder box at this point like we're good yeah it's funny I'd probably say fire making too. Actually, you got great argument for that. Yeah, I mean, I I think the biggest pro of deleting fire making is we also have to delete winter Todd. <laughs> uh, and ice demon solves all true. the problems. Honestly, that, holy shit! Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, you know what was funny? I don't know if you guys growing up, I, my parents weren't bothered by this but i do i i've had a few guests on that like that the skill thieving was the reason like they couldn't play this game or like weren't really allowed <laughs> to play with their while their parents were home <laughs> like it's just celebrating i've never stealing, heard that celebrating that's stealing funny. from people yeah yeah uh, it's it, valid yeah it, i mean it is a very strange skill when you think about it like why is it a skill to steal <laughs> i mean i understand it's a skill but like jesus man like you're just stealing like you're, we're just okay with it like yeah just steal from this dude like for 200 hours you're good steal from my, the, the market i think my dad was just happy i was like touching some guy's butt on runescape and not going to a strip club on gta fair oh my god yeah it's it's very silly the whole thieving like thieving could have been more like stealth like stealth skill but it's just straight up like it would be like a skill like lying just like learn to lie to people like holy shit it's just it just seems odd but we have we've all accepted it and it is old school yeah i mean honestly we could go down like a rabbit hole of like condensing skills like you could combine like wood cutting fletching crafting all together or something like mm -hmm. mining and smithing together like there's so many different ways you could condense skills totally yeah, flat, fletching. Not saying that craft, we should. Fletching crafting. I, there was like an argument made on Reddit uh, within the past couple of weeks. I was talking about that. Like, why is fletching not just a subsection of crafting? That's like the one I really agree with. I'm like, yep. Yeah. And when they were trying to pull warding, like warding is literally just crafting cloth and then enchanting it. So, I'm really glad. By the way, oh. You know, let's just talk about this right now. What are your guys' thoughts on sailing having passed and being introduced? Did you guys vote yes? I voted... Uh, I think I voted yes, but I preferred shamanism, personally. But I'm excited for what they have in store. I uh, I skipped. I also preferred shamanism, um, mainly because my, my uh, number one pick was Invention. Uh, mainly because like it was a bias pick. I uh, I, my main reason for playing the game is doing item hunting type stuff, mm. and uh, a big thing that happens when you do that is you get a bunch of like duplicates and stuff. And I, I like the idea of invention, like actually giving those a use, yeah, as opposed yeah. to just becoming like bonds or whatever. But uh, 
as far as selling goes, I uh, I skipped on the poll, but uh, I would say I would say I'm excited for it. And I'm pretty optimistic about it. I think at the current stage of the game and uh, the success of like most of the recent updates, I don't think we're gonna get the skill in the game without it being fun. So I think bottom line, like whenever it does get added, I think it, it is gonna improve the game because I I think it's gonna be fun. It's it's gonna be extremely hype when sailing drops. Like everybody is going to be logged in on the sea. It's going to be really exciting. Ed, craziest thing is everyone's going to lose their max cave. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Yeah. I think it's um, funny when people ask to like not lose their max cave, like grace <laughs> period and stuff. Like the, the quest cave has been like this forever. Like that's the most obvious example. And then like diary cave has been like that. Although we've only had a diary added one time after the diary cave. Yeah, it's... Uh, for for those that are really like scared of that and don't want it, like just remember that everybody loses their max capes, so yeah. it's just this kind of excitement of like, oh shit, like this is a this is something we're all having to do now, grind. And, and to be honest, if you're like, worried about your max cape, go get a construction cape and a crafting cape, and then you won't notice the difference. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's true as well. Or just transmog it like I do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's mainly like for people that use their max capes in like PVM situations and other situations. It's just they, they want to log in and not feel forced to do sailing. But at the same time, sailing is going to probably be a really fast skill. I'm imagining like 250k XP an hour beyond like level 85, I'd imagine. But I like I can't see the skill being less than 100k XP an hour. I, I think it'll be fast too. Yeah. So I'm I'm not worried about spending a month sailing when I log in just to reclaim my max cape and and anybody that has maxed like you already have put in all those hours like like you you understand how to grind and you were willing to so this isn't like you know this isn't anything new for the most part but yeah um all right so. Whale asks, what is the best PVM encounter in the game, and why is it the solo Ulm fight? Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like it could also be argued... I don't know, Nyla Waves is, is kind of cool to, like... There's depth in both of them, but, like, mechanically... Ohm definitely wins, but it's yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. But you guys both agree on solo Ohm, probably. I mean, if I had to pick one, it's definitely my favorite. Like, I'm not gonna say it's like the most complex thing in the game or anything like that, but it is. I would say definitely the thing on the game I have like spent the most time of doing that one that one <laughs> specific fight. That's and, true. And uh, I've never once gotten bored of it. Yeah. For, for I uh, <laughs> I can't really tell you why. Like I I don't know what specifically it is, but it, it's never gotten stale. At least. It just has such good flow. There's no random stalls. There's no freezing for the. It's like you you execute it perfectly. And you get to reap the rewards of just being in this endless flow of just a perfect cycle, a perfect four tick or five tick cycle, whatever you're doing. And it just feels so cool that one, it, th this is something I, I it's, it's really hard to pinpoint why this is, but it's like, you feel like you have solved something that wasn't supposed to be solved. And I think in most games, even if you didn't discover it yourself, if you are performing this, like where it's like you're safe spotting something that's not really supposed to be safe spotted, there's something about it that's like, ooh, this feels wrong. Like this feels like wrong almost in a sense, but like I'm, I, it's cool that I'm being able to kind of like abuse this monster in a sense. Like <laughs> Ohm's just fucking confused. It's just turning its head and you're just like flawlessly executing this perfect pattern. I think something about it that the fact that this wasn't meant to be makes it that much cooler like if you if you were absolutely forced to do four to one without to just not die it wouldn't feel as fun like it would just be like ugh, like I, I got to perform this but the fact that so challenge mode yeah <laughs> exactly exactly uh but no i just think it's it's really cool that 
you are in a sense abusing what was supposed to be performed. And it's the same thing with Aka Butterfly. If Aka Butterfly, if you were absolutely forced to do that, like that was the core mechanic of running in a diamond just constantly, it wouldn't feel as good as like, oh no, this is, you're above what this room even had to offer in the first place. Like, like you are clearly a level above and you're just executing it perfectly. And now you're yeah. enjoying the flow from it. <clears throat> I wonder if anyone has ever done a solo challenge mode without any just standing running. there <laughs> and without dying. I just... feel like it actually just wouldn't be possible with blood fury potentially at this point. Maybe you're right. A one way Tebow switch <laughs> full justy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're probably good with like justy flicking, but I mean, Torva is just, it's almost just as good at this point. You, you can do like a bulwark flick. Because you wouldn't have to be running. Just do a little bulwark flick here here and there. Um, okay. Furry Wall asks, If regular Torva is now considered cheese Torva, does that make my Bandos an obby cape? Um, no. <laughs> I honestly, I, I like the look of Bandos better than the new regular Torva now. That's fair. I feel like Bandos is always going to be paired with a fire cape in my mind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, I've I, never been a huge fan of how Torva looks in general. Blood Torva made it a little bit better. I wish I wish the, the colors were a bit deeper. Like, I wish that the blackness of the um, Torva was just a bit, like, richer and deeper. Kind of like the uh, Black Graceful. I think it's just a bit too gray. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of the um, the like ice torba and shadow torba? Oh shit! I think is that is a... so cool. I never saw that. Yeah, do you have a you picture? Didn't? Of that? I, I haven't I seen it. that either. It, try to find it. I got this. I'll, I'll show everybody on on YouTube. Um. But uh, yeah, I think Bandos always has like a place in my heart. Like that just looked clean. Still got a place on your chest. <laughs> Fuck you, man. God damn it. Uh yeah, no, definitely. Um Yeah, no, I got I really gotta get that. I I was actually very impressed that like right before TOA you just grinded that shit and you actually Oh that was, got that was a miracle, Torva. man. I know. I'm like, dude, you have a week, like good luck. Like hours beforehand. <laughs> I know. I was low key pretty jealous. I'm like, God damn it. Now I'm now I'm that peasant noob. Yeah, I, I still, it, there's, I actually enjoy the next fight. I really do enjoy just like having a, a solid team and going in and just grinding because um, it's really not bad. But the problem is at this point, I want to only go in with grandmasters because of the KC thing. Like you don't even need to, you know, sit there for like 30 minutes getting a bunch of KC and just waiting for everybody. But the, if you have a bunch of grandmasters, you just go in endlessly basically at this point. Um, but anybody that's a grandmaster doesn't want to do next or has already completed it or just, so I'm, I don't know. I posted it in the uh, group chat. All right, let's see this. I think just like using the, the gems you get from the bosses to like recolor, it would be Ooh. cool. Like Wait, the, um... the gems you get from where? From the DT2 bosses. Oh, that would be so badass. Like the Awakened versions, you'd have to use it? Or like, or would I you mean, you would need Blood Torva straight up. But Oh, that's true. Like the like the Ice Quartz. Would... I see. Yeah. Like what? what is the name of the Blood Torva item? What is it? Ancient Blood Ornament Kit? Yes. Something like that. They should change it to like Ancient Ceremonial Kit or something like that. And then you can like use a quartz on it to give it a, to give it a charge or to give yeah. it no three charges, one for each armor piece, and then like using that one quartz lets you in theory just reach like color one set, and then it goes back to just being like the inactive ancient uh, ceremonial kit until you put another quartz on it. Yeah, this looks this looks awesome. The. Shadorva, the purple one, just literally, you literally just look like a, a, a Skodos. <laughs> I, uh, on the topic of like recolors though, I know that's kind of like a, like a hot topic for some people. I, uh, 
I like recolors. I, I don't see the problem. I know everyone's like, everyone calls it like RS3 stuff and like rainbow and everything. But I'm like, I, I don't see a problem. Like it gives you a reason to like make yourself look different as opposed to like, we like we all know the mindset of the community. Everyone is so efficiency driven. Like if everyone had it available, everyone would be wearing the best thing available at all times, you know? Yep. Like if they had that option. So the point where like, Eventually, it gets where everyone looks the exact same. So, like, I, I don't see a problem with having, like, recolor options like that. Yeah, recolors are phenomenal. I mean, we see it with Graceful. We see it with Crystal now. I mean, you could just recolor your Crystal bow, which is just awesome. And Torva would be amazing to recolor. And as well, um, Maxcapes. Like, when are we going to be... Like, why haven't we gone to the point where you can just recolor your Maxcape a basic color? Like, and just... Like, I don't know. I just, I just feel like that would be so easy to implement. Maybe it's not. Maybe the coding's ridiculous. But, like, why can't we just go to a cape stylist, pay, you know, 500K to recolor our max cape and do just a basic color like mm. like, the, yeah. like the hair colors we have, you know? True. If you had if you had to pick one, like, you, you couldn't have both. It was only one. So either the current thing we have where we have the base max cape and then we have cosmetics combined with best in slot capes so we mm -hmm. can like show the max cape while still using best in slot gear or uh, we don't have any cosmetic like overrides for the actual like best in slot capes and we just have a max cape with uh, like whatever customization you want. Uh, so so either, like in a perfect role, slot. both, you know? Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Um. Let me just make sure I'm, I, I heard you correctly. So you're just saying, ma make it so like 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 for example, the second option was not have the ability to have an infernal max cape, and you could only wear like, an infernal cape. If you could keep it how we have it now, okay. or instead of not being able to have like max infernal cape and stuff like that, you would just have your max cape that you could customize however you like. Like in a perfect world, we'd have both of them. But I was just wondering, like if if, uh, if you'd pick that like over what we currently have. Oh, well, uh, I don't really know, but I would definitely just prefer both. I mean, the, I think personally, like like the way we have it right now, well, first of all, I think we should get rid of all best in, all non-best in slot max caves. <laughs> it's time. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's completely me mind to say it's time, but... Uh, no, my, my regular Zabby cave, bro. I love your, it. Your regular Ava's Accumulator um, fucking max cave. <laughs> the Alkin still rocks. No, but... Uh, I think that should be a thing. Um, or no, or like you just get the best in slot ones. Uh, and the other thing is like I would love, and you guys might have heard this suggestion of like, let's get a a two K CM Max Cape that simply just acts as your typical Max Cape, but now it's got that theme of okay, you would you accomplished the two thousand CMs. There you go, and it would be the same with Tob, Toa. A thousand LMS as well, where you just get these like. Yeah. In, in fact, oh yeah, I saw the screenshot of the yeah with, me, the, with me, the LMS one. I need to pull that up again. Um, yeah, that that looked really good. I mean, I'm biased, but yeah. Yeah, for those, yeah. Uh, let me let me link you guys this, and I'll show it on my end as well. I think that'd be sick. Yeah, it's... I'm like Champions Cape too, maybe. Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of the Champions Cape potentially as well. Um, so these are them. The 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 Chambers one looks fucking clean. I mean, they all look great. This is from Lion Orion. He's uh, he actually he actually came to me. He he didn't originally have the symbols on the capes, but then he you know I was like, oh, you should add the actual symbols to the Max Cape itself, and it looks so clean. So that would be cool, as well as I. I also think the Champions Cape variant would be cool. Again, it's it's not like it's in, it's forcing you to do anything. It's just, and they also would fully function as a normal Max Cape. You can just flex. Yeah, I cheap. really like like they have no stats. Keep all the functionality, please. Exactly, that's it. And then I was also thinking, you know, if they ever came out with a Heroes Cape, which would basically be like the Champions grind, just with slightly higher variants. So instead of lesser demons, greater demons. And like maybe green dragons and just some other random monsters. Not many people want to do that grind, but it would be cool to, you know, have that. Okay, like now there's another heroes max cape variant as well. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay. Um Eric asks, excited for this one. I had a similar question for No Monkey, and I'm curious what their answers are. What 
was the defining moment in your OSRS career where you felt like you grew from a noob to a high level player? Sorry about my dogs, by the way. No, you're good. Um, ooh, probably completing my first solo raid without dying. I would say. Or eh, I don't know, getting getting my first fire cape too. It was it was on this Iron Man. Like before this, I had done absolutely nothing, but yeah, they're probably first fire cape or first solo raid. Did you? I, I just need to ask. Did you get your fire cape first attempt, or did it take multiple? Two. Two. Same. Same. It was. I was. I was in tears when I died my <laughs> first time, dude. Spent like three hours in that shithole. And then uh, my friend was struggling with his on his Iron Man, and I stayed home from school one day, <laughs> and I logged on to his account and got his for him. Oh, shit. That's a good friend. What about you, Lake? Uh, mine goes way back. I would say uh, like 2015, watching Wook stream, and he's doing the bandos flicking. And uh, I I I, uh, I had a high level Iron Man at the time, like my my current alt account that's been DR in forever. And uh, I I was about to like get into the Godwars Garden. And I was like, wow, I need to learn this. And so like I just sat there like watching his vods for a few hours and like tried to like break it down. And uh, I was already like somewhat familiar with the tick system, but like like I, I understood that like it would like delay my actions like that. But I, I didn't have a very good feel for it yet, mainly because there wasn't much to practice with apart from like turn pair on, turn pair off. Mm -hmm. But uh, really just like threw myself at that like over and over again pretty much and died over and over and over again. And uh, eventually got it down to where like I, I wasn't amazing at it. Like I, I couldn't ticky at that time. It took me a while to get to where I could ticky while doing it. But even just doing the pair switching and the resetting was like leading to like 20 kill trips at the time. And uh it was just like a, I don't know. It was kind of like surreal. You would have a, you would always have like people just like outside the door that would just like sit there and watch you for like twenty <laughs> straight minutes. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. that. <laughs> and they would always be like hyping you up and shit. And so like that, that was when for me, I was like, okay, I, I, I might be pretty good at this. That My is, favorite was yeah. when you're like one HP and Bandos ranged you, and someone would say like a rip outside the door, and you would just take it and keep going. <laughs> oh <my laughs> yeah. That was the best. That is so cool. Yeah, I, I had I had a. It took a lot longer to get to that point, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I had I had a luckily a little bit of a glimmer of that. I wasn't as early, uh, clearly, but I think for me it was like after after getting my infernal cape, that was the moment really where I was like, okay, I'm, I I can choose to be good at this game if I want to. Like, yeah. I, it's it's really just an option. Like, do I want to be lazy and not learn, or just you know just be like, Ugh, like this is too much effort. And that, I think getting my Infernal Cape was like, okay, I can choose to get good at content if I want to. And Bandos was the first place I went right after Infernal Cape. And I chose to learn to flick. And it was really hard at first. And you learn it. And you start implementing the tick eating. And by the way, I had learned fully the flicking system. And I'm probably very similar to you, Lake, where like tick eating was so awkward. It just didn't, like, it was just really hard to execute. There's something about like me overthinking, you know, hitting the F keys and everything and trying to get that system down and I would like panic. But and so it feels like you're never going to get it down in the first couple hours, but then you start feeling it and you're like, "Oh, okay, it's all clicking now." And that like you, I mean, for I me never specific had... Yeah, go for I'm it. sorry. I thought you were done. I'm sorry. You... No, I was, I was just going to say like I never had 20 people alongside the door, but I'd get the occasional person, you know, it's just like hopping worlds. And they just sit there and like it, it always felt good when they're just like worshiping you <laughs> outside for doing it for me with like the ticketing specifically it was uh i was doing one specific thing wrong that was like a super minor thing but it was making it like basically borderline impossible so what i was doing was uh the timing for ticketing on the very last attack of the cycle before you reset so that would be the attack where Grador is one tick before the ranger, yep. so you need to reset so they don't line up on the same tick after that. Mm -hmm. So uh, on that, uh, after, on the tick after Grador attacks, you, you're needing to pre range for the ranger. So what I was doing was I would be ready to ticky on the tick that Grador attacks, like be like, okay, that's the tick I need to react on, and then go to pre range. And you wouldn't really have time to do that. You need to go to pre range and then ticky on the same tick. And that didn't like click for me for a super long mm. time. So I was doing that out of order and like always like basically losing a tick doing that. 
And what it essentially did was it made it where I couldn't react to the range hit to Tiki on that attack. I was either clicking it because I did it immediately, or I was trying to react to it, which I wouldn't have the time to do, and then I would miss it and die pretty much. Yeah. And that was a... I don't know. I feel like that was the kind of problem that you wouldn't really have these days because, like, now if you look up a method for that, for for that, uh, or if you look up a guide for that method, it's going to point out stuff like that. Whereas, like, back in the day, like, the only place you could find any resource of it was, like, if Wooks happened to be live. Yeah. Is there, like, a tick eating bandos guide on YouTube? I feel like I've never seen one. There's probably a few at this point. There's got to be. I know, I, the, I know there's, that. like, flicking guides. I don't know about the tick eating specifically. Yeah. yeah. There's, but, uh, de there's definitely at least one tick eating guide because the, a guy in my chat like years back was just, just, I mean, totally backseat gaming. Whenever I would band us flick, he'd go there and just pretend he's like the great, he would pretend he's <laughs> Wooks 2.0 with an ego. And I'm like, brother, like I'm, I'm good. Like, yeah. yeah, my, my big point was like the, uh, like age of information that we're in pretty much like minor details like that that can be make or break that, that's something you're more likely to actually be able to find out these days yeah without have like slamming your head against the wall for so long until you realize like what your minor mistake was mm -hmm. yeah like back and, for my first solo like i don't even think four to one was a thing like i was doing three to one and using a blow pipe on head phase and just everything was kind of not just available back then yeah so i think that was kind of my i guess defining moment i remember Ladius, and i know probably both of you have done at least a little bit of bandit flicking with shield flicking as well but uh Ladius is the guy i always remember that would always implement the shield flicking as well and i'm like that that is something i never ended up even trying because it, it just felt he would do it at Zami. Like he would Yeah, flick. and he would augury flick too. That that he, was sick. It, it was he at would the, shield and augury he flick. He was he was crazy with that. Now, to be fair, with the functionality of menu entry swapping where I could just get rid of even potentially clicking on the Zami melee minion, that that was always the most annoying thing. Is like if I'm if I'm trying to implement even more clicks into this, I'm misclicking so often. Like I accidentally clicked the melee or just right underneath Zami, or I accidentally just miss the click entirely and i'm just losing dps trying to mm. click more and um ladius just when i think of ladius i just think of elite void bottoms <laughs> elite void bottoms and the uh it was i think it was before arc light although maybe arc light had already come out at this point but just, just just something about those void bottoms that whenever i see those now with like a bcp on i just think of ladius i'm like yeah fuck I'd like i that. think it was zami had top but Oh, yeah. was it that he wouldn't use a? B maybe yeah, he may be right. He didn't. He didn't use that, or maybe it was Carol's top. But yeah, you might be right. It might have been Zami top. What always impressed me about Ladius was uh his like a uh, like player control, like uh I, I guess that's movement really. But this was like back before like NPC indicators weren't a thing on any client at that time mm -hmm. to see like that the specific outline of a monster, and at Zami specifically, like we were talking about, uh, one of the easiest things to me mess you up on is accidentally going under a minion because they're so big compared to the Bandos ones. Yeah. So you can accidentally go under a minion, make it move, change its attack tech. And he would like, he would just never mess that up. And like, to, again, this was before we had like NPC indicators and stuff, like no true tile, no destination tile. Like it was pretty, like pretty raw on the plugins back then. He was, crazy. and uh, he just had like, he, he just had like such good control. You know what I mean? Totally. Like he would, he he could move to a specific square and like not like move the minions around him or whatever, and like um I don't know a, a lot of us like struggled to see the game that way before the plugins kind of made it easier to see. Mm -hmm. Now for for sure, and uh, the same Ladius had great control. I also remember like Hauke. Hauke was really really good, really underrated as well for the time. Like Hauke was the first streamer I was watching that made Zami look really just simple like he he just he just made it look like this isn't a big deal like yeah you know just go in flick it like finish the kill and his uh solo chambers were also really like amazing to watch in the, in the early days he was just something about how he just like his composure that he kept all the time he just it, it made it look like he never even had to learn these things like it was just natural to him even though he probably <laughs> spent hours learning it and then he just streamed it but yeah, those those guys like you you 
Lake, or so I'm, I'm addressing like Lake, but Lake, Puggin, um, Reed, I, I always remember, Latius, uh, Hauke, probably missing a few guys, but like you guys are in that collection Reed. of, yeah, I mentioned Reed, right? Yeah. Oh, but. Uh, Cloud as well. Yeah, he, he, yeah, yeah, for sure. But like, I'm just thinking of like those, the Iron Man that when I was a very noob Iron Man, I remember watching oh, your guys' okay. streams and being like, okay, like these guys are fucking beasts. And like, you, you wanted to get to that point. You know, you just like, fuck, like there's, there's just like such a high skill ceiling when it comes to this game. And you're just like being able to watch you guys was like such a pleasure for the time. And uh, it, it, it's strange now because it feels like at least on like the content creation side like just watching streams and stuff like it, it feels like everybody's pretty damn good nowadays and it's like clearly that's not the case like there are just people that are still bad but like there, there's such a huge variety now of just watching people that are just really good and i don't know it used to be very special back in the day to mm -hmm. just have like a handful of streamers that are like okay these are the goats and i was always very iron man focused i loved watching the, the people that were irons especially but yeah, um, I wanted to just mention as well, what do you, I, I've, I think this topic was actually brought up in the original Puggin cast as well, but like the idea that God Wars, it was so prestigious for the time, being able to learn to melee flick and getting a bunch of kills per hour. And now we just have these, thanks to GE Challenge now, but seriously, GE Challenge is a fucking beast and an animal, but he's completely revolutionized that place. And now we've just gotten to the point where you just bofa everything or Tebow everything. And it's just kind of eliminated those really fun, intricate methods that just are, you're, you're basically trolling now if you melee God Wars. Yeah. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Is it kind of sad? I do think it's sad. Like the only time that you would really ever melee flick is for like one or two band OCAs and then it's just, yeah, I don't know. I think like yeah. probably has more insight. I mean, I I went through it like super recently because I uh after I got the fang on the account I'm currently playing, I uh started doing bandos afterwards and I just got the fang, so I'm like, man, I want to use this thing. Like I went like five times the drop rate on it. So I <laughs> I, I was like, I put in work for this. I'm going to use it. So I I started doing bandos and I'm like, okay, we're going to do like melee pair flicking. Like it's not bad kills per hour. It's worse than a bofa, but like getting it's getting kills, you know. And like just streaming it was the most miserable thing ever because like I couldn't do a kill without someone showing up and being like, well, why aren't you ranging? Mm -hmm. I know. Uh, yeah. So yeah. It, it is kind of sad to see. Like, I don't know. Like I, I appreciate the kiting methods. Like they're, they're like super innovative and they have definitely made a lot of uh, players like game experiences more fun because they're able to do something that otherwise they really had no alternative. But, yeah, uh, that's... Maybe, maybe it maybe it all goes back to melee being so inaccurate that uh, if we had like a more accurate scythe, for example, we'd have a lot more reason to actually do stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And it, even if like just you know those God Wars dungeon bosses just had very low uh, melee defense as well, just like that, that would be a nice change. But yeah, it's one of those things where it's like I'm all, it for those listening that are really into like those range methods. It just sounds like I'm complaining to complain, and I really do like innovation at the end of the day. What is just unfortunate is that we have these really cool methods that take a bit of time to learn and they're super fun and they get that flow, but now it's not even worth learning. It would mm -hmm. be like to the point where we advance so high that four to one is just no longer worth doing because you can just like five shot the hand with some nuclear just melee weapon, you know, just we've completely eliminated the enjoyment of four to one because we had this stupid method of just exploding <laughs> like where it's just, you're just trolling if you're even trying to implement four to one. Cause you like, you just kill it so quickly, you know, like that would be unfortunate in my opinion. It could be biased, but like, I kind of wish none of those methods ever were created because it would kind of incentivize like actually learning the difficult. It, it's just um, tough because like it, I am not against the progress and the, um, you know, the innovation. I think that's always cool. But it would have been cool if, like, the innovation came at a cost. Like, where mm -hmm. it's not even faster kills. Like, if it was, like, 
you know, 75% the speed of the kills. So if you're really, really, really good at melee flicking, you're actually getting a, a good chunk more. That would have been like yeah. really optimal. I think that'd be fine. Like, I just, I, like I just remember the, sorry, I just remember the satisfaction I felt like Lake was there when I tried to learn Bando's flicking and just going in and kind of, I definitely didn't get it like first try, but like I started to, second try, started to click. <laughs> second then, try, yeah. I don't know, just like friends that have learned and then being like so hyped for it once they get it, it's nothing compared to, or it's everything compared to just like shooting the Bofa and running yeah. around the room. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's um, like really much of a problem for the game, seeing as it's not like super relevant like content anymore. But like back in the day when it was like that was pretty much end game content was like solo God Wars. <laughs> Um, it was it like it had a nice sense of progression to it, like natural progression. Like you would, everyone would start off just going in, face tanking, pray melee. Maybe they get a kill, maybe they don't, and then they would kind of progress. They would they would get to where they're doing like oh they're gonna they notice they can step under between hits and get like more than one hit to his hit his attacks, you know. Mm -hmm. And then they start realizing like oh these minions are shredding me. Maybe I could try to like prayer flick some of them, and they're like prayer flicking just the major, and then eventually they'll uh, or people would stop at like various points of course depending on like what they were good with but uh like eventually the people that were like trying to like min max it all the way would get to the point where they were like finding out how to do the perfect like, method and everything so it just had like a nice sense of progression and was like equally re rewarded for that progression as well yep yeah because every step along that progression they would be getting better and better kills like you would have people that are doing like step unders and praying mage so they're not like doing like the full actual like prayer flicking cycle but they're mitigating damage however they can and they're getting more kills per trip because of it mm -hmm. so it just felt nice but these days yeah you you load up the ge challenge video mark the tiles and uh <laughs> click the square yeah. yeah i mean everything in this game has just been solved it feels like like and we for the most part, it's all pros. I mean, there's there's clearly cons to like any sort of like plugin, but we live in pluginscape too, where like it's just everything has just become so much more simple, and just just the quality of life is unreal. Just the fact that you can shift click, and you never need a right click walk here, like like just in every situation, you don't have to have that little bit of extra precision where you have to right click walk here like really quickly. Um, you just shift click, which I think is a really positive change, but clearly it's added a lot of ease to so many methods and especially just with, I mean, just tile markers in general, just knowing the exact outlines of everything just makes things really, really nice. And death animation removal has been extremely nice. Thank I God. really, uh, I really see stuff like that as like a good thing because it's taken a lot of the difficulty out. Like I was talking about with Ladius earlier, like how I was so impressed that he could see the game like that without actually having the plugins, like because they didn't exist yet. Like mm -hmm. showing that, hey, Krill takes up exactly these squares. Like this is exactly where his edge is, even though the animation might make it kind of hard to see. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I don't think it's really much of a problem that uh, like plugins make stuff like that easier. I, I don't really think like visibility should be like a difficulty point of the game. Mm hmm. So uh, I like that stuff like that is a lot easier now, and you you see the you see the way like people learn stuff so quickly now because they can actually tell what's going on. So I think it's a good thing because it gets people actually understanding like how this old clunky game works, and then they can actually get to where they're increasing the difficulty in other ways. Like we were talking about with Vardorvis and Leviathan doing the prayer switching and the movement in the same tick. Yeah. That's a different kind of intensity that really you it would be borderline impossible for people to like. Sh to, for people to be able to uh, focus on stuff like that whenever they're still having to focus on like the raw visibility issues of the game. Yeah, like doing doing Vardorvis without any tile indicators on anything would be quite impressive. I mean, you could, I feel like a lot of people probably could do it simply because they've already had the luxury of seeing where things generally are. Mm -hmm. But I feel like just going in there kind of blindly and just kind of solving it without any sort of visual indicator has got to be just fucking also rough. Also, to add on to that, without axe skipping would be insane. Like, <laughs> Addy does not axe skip. He he hates it. I don't know. He's so against it. Like, all of his challenges oh, yeah, he did, don't he, let you axe skip. And he, it just puts me off from trying it because I'm like, no, I'm I'm good, bro. Yeah, he, he, he does crazy. that. He does the thing where, like, he has, like, a circle of tiles throughout the room, right? And he just 
yeah kind of just he to actually be... dodges which is probably the way you're meant to do it but yeah no i, I yeah i'm good i'm, I'm with you corbin <laughs> even um even Knox, i think i don't know if he designed i think he designed or helped to design the awakened bosses he said he discovered axe skipping and he used it like he got blood torva before it came out wow which was impressive also something something funny happened i was practicing on zandy's account for the awakened bosses and he came in my stream and he's like hey i'm gonna have to ask you to use your own account please and i'm like shit <laughs> and then the next day i was questing dt2 on my alt and he came in and he said questing stream pog <laughs> and it, it just it just i don't know it was funny but good shit it was a little uh little troll he's a funny guy okay um hobbs asks what are some ideas for pvm mechanics you guys might have that could push the difficulty of new high level encounters and if any do you think jagex would consider introducing them at all he also has one more question what would you consider to be peak difficulty execution in the game i think we've already kind of touched on that do you have any particular ideas on uh, what like raids for or other end game bosses could introduce? I'm dog shit at thinking of ideas, honestly, but maybe mm -hmm. like. I um, mean, honestly, yeah. like in real life too, I uh, I am not creative like that. I am a. Uh, I, I think I'm really good at taking something and then trying to add on to it, like um. I guess like suggesting changes and stuff. I think I'm pretty good with that, but mm -hmm. I, I'm never good at like coming up with the big picture. Uh, as far as like mechanics that I think like push the dif difficulty, I mean it's something I've mentioned a couple times in this cast already. The uh, like requiring you to do multiple inputs at the same time, so like movement and prayer switching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Leviathan and just other situations. Also, uh, also polyrhythm things, so things that require you to deal with two different speeds. Yeah, that. At the same time, whether that's like your attack speed and the monster's attack speed being different, or whether that's um, two different monsters with two different attack speeds at the same time. Yeah, I, this is another thing that I'd mentioned like two years ago on the Pug and Cast was like just a place where imagine you you only had you know five prayer points, and you do have a polyrhythm thing going on. And like you, you actually have to one tick flick these, but it's not gonna be just absolutely wild where you're having to also like do gear flicks and all this other stuff. But it's mainly just the focus on okay, let's focus on this polyrhythm, and let's execute it perfectly where you can where you're only doing those one tick flicks where you're not losing any prayer. And you know like that would be just be such a fun like encounter to have. I feel like just because it's not about precision of like just the, just total mouse precision it's, just, it's actually about brain power like okay i have to actually focus and engage with what this monster is doing what this monster is doing and what this one's doing and then somehow you know over time you would just get really comfortable with it but initially it would be brutal like imagine you had a monster that's attacking eight ticks one that's attacking three and one's attacking five yeah. <laughs> like you just be overwhelmed out of control for the first bit until you start to and and all you would really need to do is just see a visualization of it like a long form like timeline of like okay this is where this one attacks this is where this one and then just memorize it and then when you perform it you're gonna look like a god like that would true that would, that would be so and you're also fun. not gonna be able to tell anybody what's going on in your brain yeah, whatsoever yeah. Do it. <laughs> yep that's the best part about it so you're then, not even thinking <laughs> I know. And then you get the offensive prayers as well in. So you're just looking like... like yeah. I mean, honestly, that's... Um, that, that's honestly what um, like the 600 Zebex are doing. Uh, my attack speed is 5 tick. I'm always doing my offensive prayers. Zebek is 6 tick. I'm doing step-ins as, well as, do, as well as flicking the overhead prayers. Yep. And, yeah, and you're skipping step-ins so step got, got to the make your and, five yeah. tick. Yeah. yeah. For the second part, were we... Sorry, were we done with that part? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, pretty I, much. I guess the last thing I'll say is like, yeah, like what you said, like the, those step unders where like if you do have, you know, two monsters that do eventually align perfectly every few ticks, you'd have to do those step unders to negate it. And I think that would yeah, be like really a, cool, really interesting. 
I think I think Exact was like the the first one that showed it off, doing the uh, the blob flicking in Inferno with with the snake as well, and like stepping under the snake whenever they would overlap. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Man. What, what about you, uh, Corbin? With the second one, your like, peak difficulty. Uh, um. Honestly, the hardest thing I've done was the solo hard mode. Like, I didn't think it was going to be... I mean, it's mostly Nilo. Like, solo hard mode Nilo is just... There's so many things you have to keep track of, and it's just kind of a mess. But, so I've yeah, never... overall, that's probably the the toughest in my opinion like even including awaken leviathan and like msb rune crossbow inferno i've never um, done those uh solo tobs in, in, in any mode but like is hard mode nilo solo is is there any rng element or is it like if you execute this properly you will 100 percent get this um i don't know if like i mean, I mean I, clearly I think there I still would, be... would be some like one in a million where you're just hitting all zeros and stuff but like for the yeah. most part I still see Cole die, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, he's done a lot, but there's there's quite a bit of optimization, but you can still just have unlucky pillar yes. falls. And... Yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah, and, that, and that's probably that. fine for the most part. I, I feel like in the future as well, like we're going to get more weapons and stuff that are just better, and it's just going to make that room even more consistent over time. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I kind of wish Nilos didn't explode when they popped, like whenever they like live out their timer in the waves. Oh, is that like one of the most annoying things? Uh, I haven't one... done it, but uh, that that's what it looks like. Everyone's taking their damage from most of the time. Like just they're running their pattern, doing their blood barraging, and then Nilos are exploding, and they have no way of knowing that Nilos about to blow up mm -hmm. without you can't... Like, specific things that might be used. <laughs> yeah, you also can't do that in hard mode because you'll just die to recoil um oh yeah but yeah like during <laughs> during the wave that's kind of one of the optimizations you can do like pay attention to which ones are about to explode and kill those before they kill you essentially but yeah it's just like more incentive to kill the ones that are newer right yeah so when it comes to like plugins and visualizations at do you guys in your head have a certain position where like you would be crossing the line like i just wonder for example like if there was a visual indicator of like okay this is when the nilo is going to die like would that be stepping too far because I've, I've i don't know I've, i think that would be fine in a sense but like at what point do we have too much information on the screen that's too helpful or is there, there kind of already is have you seen the the new dino wave plugin no is it, it crazy? puts a number on the crab and it even you can like it differentiate ones that have split from a big crab. It, but yeah, yeah. It, well, what's really funny is like, um, and this I I haven't never seen you guys do this, but I feel like with high level PVMers, like we that shit on noobs or something or like get good. It's like brother, your your whole screen is like just filled with numbers and plugins and everything, and like everything's like low. Um, whatever it is low uh what's that? uh like low detail mode and you, like every single thing has a number and like npcs are despawning like becoming invisible before they've actually died but the game registers as them dead so like you got this thing where like if if you were to bring in noobs into nilo that don't understand the plugins like th brother going into a vanilla nilo fight is way more difficult than just having a <laughs> shit ton of plugins on there yeah and they have worse gear so people are like, oh, like you're dog shit. It's like, brother, like you have, <laughs> you've done this for hundreds of hours. You have uh, all the top plugins that actually are genuinely making this so much easier. You don't have to pay attention to things really. And on top of that, you're just have best in slot gear. I think, uh, I don't know. I, sometimes I see those like comments of people like shitting on noobs. I'm like, dude, they, they have it so much more rough than you. Yeah. Okay, um, Bayless Mango asks, what advice would you give to somebody wanting to be successful as a hardcore Iron Man in terms of making it to endgame and completing endgame content? How long would you spend practicing endgame PVM on a non-hardcore prior to attempting hardcore? Um, 
I guess biggest pieces of advice, uh, number one, one that he already touched on, um, having another account to practice on, because if you are starting a hardcore and it's like your first account and you don't have anything else to practice on, you already, yeah, you already have an expiration date. Yeah. Um, I guess also going into it, like knowing that if you don't plan on playing the account afterwards, like know that you're investing all the time and it's going to be lost one day, probably going to make it easier on you whenever it does happen. If you're, if you are choosing like not to play on it anymore afterwards, kind of like be prepared for the inevitable. But yeah, I, I really would say the biggest thing as far as like staying alive and all that, uh, not that I'm any good at it, would be uh, practicing Damn. on another account. Also, I had to get practicing. In there before YouTube commented, man. <laughs> also practicing, like as if you were on the hardcore, like oh yeah, eating like, at high. Mimic your scenario. And, yeah, yeah, and even like I don't know, practicing teleports, honestly, too. Like in situations would be maybe beneficial. Yeah, that's and always keep your teleport in the same place. Yeah, I've seen people to, to die just because they moved it on accident yeah i can't tell you how many times i'm watching mutts and someone's like put your teleport in the top left and mutts is like <laughs> no <laughs> like he's had he's had his muscle memory there forever and he can go there in like 10 milliseconds if he wants to yep yeah speaking of mutts that him and uh, well praise foot for that i say these things like they're very obvious because obviously like we all know praise foot died but just like it, it's cool and like you know a couple of years people listening back to this they're gonna be like oh is it around when praise foot died the first zuck helm grandmaster uh, hardcore um but it's so yeah, sad bro it's so, yeah that's something guys... i would die to like just complete brain off clicking on a superior and just not even realizing it's a superior that can just melt your hp in 1.2 seconds it's it's like sad in a way, but like he already did the craziest thing ever. So at least it wasn't like a task before Zuckhelm and then he dies to something stupid. The so. only thing left was Blood Dwarf. <laughs> that's yeah. true. Yeah, him and him and Mutz. And then though, that's still, crazy. I would say, pretty unrealistic at this point. <laughs> Do you think Mutz will get Blood Dwarf? I think there's a chance, but I think there's a better chance of him dying. Yeah, he he like. I, I do think it's possible, but uh, mainly because of the way I know he would approach it, because it's how he approached the Hydra task. Like, he didn't just, like, do it once on his own and was like, okay, I'm good. He uh, he he practiced that fight, like, for two weeks straight, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I imagine he did it hundreds of times, like, doing it the exact same way he, did, he would on the hardcore. Like, knowing every single scenario possible, like, being super familiar with the poison and everything. Yep. And I think he would take that same kind of, like, careful approach to these things as well. Mm hmm True. But, yeah. like, there's points, just like at Vard, you miss one prayer. And it's just, and then yeah, you there's no room there. prayer. Axe off cool. prayer, you're so dead. That, that's yeah. why, like, I've always said, like, in terms of a hardcore getting blood torva, Vardy's going to be the hard one. Mm-hmm. Because Leviathan, sure, it's difficult, but you can practice that enough to where that's not going to be difficult for you anymore. And it's also not a one-shot kill. Like, you miss, like, one orb, you can recover from that or even teleport. Yeah. Vardorvis, like, if you make the mistake of missing an axe while missing a prayer, you're you're just done. Dude, if... I mean, already, I have to hand it to Mutz. Like, I've never... I've never seen him as, like... Oh my god, like Wooks, you know. There's like he's just he's always been kind of like just really underrated and kind of like you know, mm. you see some clips and he's like it kind of has like some, you know, he's not very precise with everything, but man, he is fucking determined and he has proven to mm. everyone that he can do some crazy shit. Bro, I watched yeah. him do a solo 450 baba with no red X and it about gave me a panic attack. <laughs> And he's just he's just doing it, and I'm like, bro, dude. I think it was he was doing the Baba transmog too. It might have been Aka transmog, but mm. God bless. It I was think uh, terrifying. I think Mutz is the best hardcore player of all time, honestly. Yeah, like not not to say the best hardcore account. Like I, I guess Praise Foot's recent death, like gotta say that's it. But as far as like the person behind the account, I think he's the best hardcore player of all time. And not to say like that means that like he could do anything without dying that other people can't do i mean as in like he has progressed through the game mode you know like he's been through it a few times and every single time he's like learned from what he's died to and progressed much much further for the most part 
yeah uh, that's i don't know i feel like that's just kind of like what the game mode is about you know like even though he's not like he's not like the best pvm in the world by any means but he has done like so many things that years ago people would have been like oh that's impossible you see him die to that dog or something yep true yeah no that's a great take i i would just as far as like the hardcore goes i have a lot of respect for him with the game mode yeah he and this is another thing about mutts is like on top of him being just so determined i mean for he has done this for years just remade 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 like you see any other person like even your like lake i think of Bodhi, i think of roidy like any sane person you've just had enough of hardcore for a time you just need to take a break like god damn i take like like a one-year break between every account pretty much yeah and and then you have mutts that's like he fucking died on an account that's so progressed and the next second he's remaking or it's already made i have no clue bro it's it's i don't know it's just it's just crazy and then on top of that it's like he's so underrated still like i feel like he he doesn't even do it for like you know the the clout or anything he just does it cuz he loves the game and he loves hardcore mode and he just <laughs> is just such a beast and it's just crazy yeah i just think yeah, he's a he's a gem in the community and he's truly proven himself agreed yeah like yeah, it's always when so i annoying. dc'd sorry you go no you go ahead man like when i dc'd on my hardcore like i think i did not make another for two years and i made it as a joke i made my hardcore that's alive now i made it to kill rob and lms oh my god <laughs> that's it I, to kill uh fox stevenson uh, yeah his rsn but and then i just kept playing lms and i'm like you know I'll, I'll screw around on it and then yeah yeah no i mean like everyone can attest like there's nobody that's built for hardcore more than mutz is and yeah so, yeah amen to that i always hey. uh Sorry, I always think it's, like, really annoying whenever people, uh, like, kind of flame, like, the remakes. Like, people who, uh, like, like Mutz, for example, will die and immediately, without hesitation, start a new account. Because it's, like, obviously they they have decided that that's the only way they enjoy the game. BF Rocket was the same way. Mm-hmm. Like, it's either hardcore, they don't want to play the game. So, like, that that's how they have fun with the game. So, I, I, I don't know. I just think it's weird how people can, like, judge how someone else, like, invests their time. Totally, yeah. That that's very silly when people just and that that goes with anything. Like people just enjoy the game differently. Yeah, and at the end of the day, we're all wasting our time equally. Like, I know. No I feel like people can't understand that. Like, like come on, guys. We're all a RuneScape community at the end of the day. We all play this game. We're all nerds. Like, we're we're wasting our time playing a, a medieval point and click game. Like, let's just embrace our achievements and not just like just. <laughs> I just one of the most upsetting things and. I think, I, like, I made a video and, like, uh, you know, I agreed with my point pretty clearly. I, I don't know if right now I'm going to say the exact same point. So, but it's basically, like, we have a dedicated subreddit to a goddamn video game that in and, in and of itself is a waste of time. And people just shit on people's achievements. Like, where else can a person go to just share their, you know, wasted time achievement that they th- find to be valuable. Like, they're just, <laughs> like, you know, I, I got a 99 on this account. Or, like, I, you know, if people get anything above that, people are just fucking flaming them, shitting on them. Like, why'd you do that? Like, brother, like, this is this is a tight little community where we can share our achievements. Like, wh- why is there any flame going on at all? Or just, Jesus, yeah. like, it's, it's a game. <clears throat> just, also, g- going back to... The hardcore um i don't know if you guys know blind but that man is also deterred yeah blind said <laughs> i think he's had over 20 hardcores and a lot of them have been very progressed and the man just... has done gauntlet quite a few times yeah <laughs> dude i still so remember. shout out to him too i All still right. remember when lake had you, know, the, you like what what were you the first person to get on the cg high scores or like one of the one of the first second Oh, second, yeah. No, it was the only one on the. High oh, scores. were you? Yeah, it was. Um, it was before they like reworked Gauntlet to make like T three possible and all that. Yeah, that's. Cool. Oh, I'm thinking of the guy that tried to get second. He died to a dragon. <laughs> oh <laughs> yes, I, I remember that. Dude, no, I remember he, watching. He passed you me. He got he got one KC this. higher, and then he died to the dragon. So then I had to go back and get like two KC to go above. <laughs> What'd you say, Corbin? I uh, I remember watching Lake do those, and I'm like, 
I was just thinking, like, why are you doing this? Yeah, like, it's just but, suicide, man. Like, you're just, don't do it, dude. It's so yeah. funny. And now we see, it. isn't there people over a thousand now on Hardcore? It's like a, a, a few of them or something? Yeah, but tier, tier one is is another another yeah. road. That's true. Even watching Lake then, Tier 2, I'm like, please, just just Tier 3, man. But I've never seen him die at the Tier 2 prep, so he's yeah. fine. And then a cold one dying like the very day he completes uh, the first solo top mm-hmm. on Hardcore. <laughs> that was uh, kind of unfortunate. But he got what he you know set out to do done, which is cool. That was the, the tree hitting the power line, right? No, that was... Or how did his... that one die, Zora? No, he just died to CG. Like, he just... Oh, really? Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. pretty sure he just, just died. I don't died, remember that like, at all. I remember the account dying, like, right afterwards. But I didn't remember what he died to at all. Yeah, it was just CG. Yeah. It just He just died. You're thinking of the one he... The power went out at Hydra, I think. Mm. But, yeah. Yeah, it's, that it's, was rough. it's crazy. Like, the feats... I, I have stated so many times on things that'll just never happen. Like, I never would have imagined and i didn't ever like say this wouldn't happen but i never could have imagined a hardcore completing a solo tob like that's just unreal and then zuck helmet was like there's no way any hardcore is getting a zuck helmet now i am gonna make this stance uh for the you know the, the however many times i've done this but no no hardcore group iron man will ever get a zuck helmet that is for sure like there's no way anyone's gonna prove me wrong on that right like do you guys agree with that like there's no mm. possible way. Probably, yeah, probably there's, not. Yeah, there's just no way because everything's dangerous. Six Jads is dangerous. Inferno's dangerous. Well, oh yeah, I like, mean Chambers is dangerous. Like every single goddamn thing is dangerous. And then, like you have to get the gear just to be able to do the tasks. I mean. And then the more time goes on, the harder of a task will be. Like, if you have to get Blood Torva as well. I don't I mean, think you'll have to, but yeah. I, I Probably. I think that's a good assumption. But yeah, that, that, that's something I think will never happen. What if, I, what, if, go. what if one person... Wait, never mind, that wouldn't work. I, I forgot about the team task. <laughs> I was about to be like, what if one person did it and they used like, all the lives, but I forgot about like the team task that you would have to do with the team. Yeah, so I, I think how they work, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you made a duo group hardcore, you only have to do the duo tasks, correct? Like you don't have to uh, do If you made a tasks. duo, you can't actually get the Zuck Helm at all because the uh, personal space uh, task at Bloat is Did bugged. they still not fix that? I thought I they were so. gonna I thought they were gonna make adjustments for that. Like if you did they, have a duo They did, but like it, it ignores like speed run times for like team sizes that you don't have, but I think specifically that one is bugged and still shows Uh-oh. up even okay. if you do a. Well, if they fix it, it'd probably I, I don't be know better if to do thing. solo. If, it, if it's been fixed, I just don't know. Solo group hardcore, I think, would be the juice. Yeah, but you can't do that, right? Yeah, you're just locked out of combat achievements at that point. Like you can get well, the master without the team tasks. If if they get rid of the team tasks, then I think that would be the move. Yeah, yeah, like if, it would actually be cool if there was a way to just make ex, like an extreme hardcore where you have all the limitations as normal group hardcore where everything's dangerous, just as like making a solo account like that. That would be enough in my opinion, but we just don't have that. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, my hands don't work. AKA Cams asks. Big fan of you both. If y'all had to pick an achievement in game or IRL that you're most proud of, or one of each, what would they be? Damn, IRL. I'm gonna need a second. I mean, I have two for RuneScape, but I can't think of anything IRL, bro. (laughs) Um, Probably my Hardcore Inferno was a cool one. I did a uh i probably talked about it on the first cast but it was rune crossbow msb and ice burst and i first tried it somehow that was pretty cool Sheesh. and i think i'm still the only iron man to solo hard mode damn really yeah shit That's... and i was like fifth or sixth in the game to solo tub yeah, that was crazy. You were uh, pretty. That, that that's just something I've never 
been in like these kind of like challenges that don't give you anything it's just I'm, I'm always impressed by like you and just other players that just go out of their way to just do something just for the sake of you know kind of proving to yourself that you can do it yeah i know some of lakes like have you thought uh, of the no pillar that for me just, i would say yeah. i would say it's really more so just like tying the two together i would i would say i'm really proud of uh how, uh, how streaming has been able to change my life, even though I've never been like the most successful. I've uh, still been able to actually go out and make it on my own, like live on my own for seven years, pretty much just entirely independent. And uh, the fact that I was able to do that just pretty much purely based off of this video game that I used to get in trouble for playing too much when <laughs> I was a kid. <laughs> kind of, uh, I don't know, that, that's something I've always been really proud of. Yeah, that's really like truly like I would I would get in trouble as a kid for like just playing the game too much, like spending way too much time inside or whatever. And then <laughs> like years down the line, uh, it's like the big reason that I am able to be so independent and not like be a burden to like anyone in my family or anything. Yeah, that's a cool one. Yeah, I think but I mean, the fact that both of you have been able to just literally play RuneScape and get paid for it is just really just a, a cool thing that I feel like it's easy to forget like the blessing of that. So I think that's a, a really cool feat. And you guys were, you know, just, you did it on your own. You didn't have anybody, you know, didn't just get launched into the opportunity. You, you grew it organically, both of you. So, uh, yeah, big, big props for that. I think, uh, I think it's easy to forget, like I said, like the achievement of being able to have done that. So, Okay, um, 42 asks, how do you feel about the recent design switch towards tankier PVM encounters with limited ability to reduce defense? An example might be Vard, where if his starting defense was approximately 50 levels lower, Scythe would be categorical best in slot. Whisperer, also an example with mage defense. Oh, I didn't know it did it at Whisperer too. I didn't know that either, actually. He's like, I, I don't know. I have a shadow. I don't splash. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I guess it goes back yeah, to yeah, what we've pointed on so many times in this podcast already. Lack of melee accuracy, especially. And I guess apart from the shadow, lack of magic accuracy. <laughs> shadow kind of... Uh, Shadow's been like the first thing for magic that is like truly accurate. That Like you're using mage on things you didn't even know you could mage before. Yep. Um... Yeah, I mean, I feel like Dragon Warhammer came into the game at a time where we didn't have any insane special attacks. Like, we literally had Crystal Halley and Dragon Dagger. <laughs> and, uh... Dragon Battle Axe, kind of, about uh, that one? No, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess it was also, like, similar time frame to Claws coming out, too. But, True. like, we didn't have a whole lot of special attacks at the time, and we also didn't have a whole lot of content either. So, like big thing that people were wanting the dragon warhammer was like it was going to be our baby stadius hammer so people could go go do corp and then um it hasn't like aged very well with the game and it was like obviously really strong to the point where it was make or break at every boss tech on you know mm -hmm. and um i i think it's kind of nice that we are like going out of the way to avoid everything being so reliant on the dragon warhammer because it, it's not fun if you hit zero in five minutes if your life is gone like, yeah. it's just not fun. <laughs> and, and the fact that but, like, um, that would be optimal in almost every situation is to always just bring a hammer. That would just be yeah. so boring. Yeah. I, uh, I I definitely think it's nice that we still have places where we can use, like, various different defense strains, whether it be, like, BGS or Bone Dagger, or uh, not Bone Dagger, Deer God, or uh, Dragon Warhammer being better for that specific scenario. Mm -hmm. But I also like having the mix in of things that can't be reduced where you really want to prioritize your DPS specs. I just think the only problem is uh, making sure that we actually have the melee accuracy that can keep up with that defense level wherever you cap it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, like, I don't think Scythe should just be, like, like, it Vard, for example, I don't think Scythe should just be a tiny bit better than Fang. Like, I think it should be decent, decently significant rather than just, like, a couple seconds after the, the drain. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the main problem with the scythe, in particular to Vardorvis, is Vardorvis is a two by two, so you're not even getting all three swings. Yeah, like that. I feel like we could just have a discussion. Like, should the scythe be able to deal three hit slots to two by twos? I personally think, yeah, but if not, then I think it's just really important to just understand that Vardorvis is not. 
is not even supposed to be an optimal place for a scythe simply because it's a two by two. True. But I'm okay with either direction. I, I'm totally okay with three hit spots being given to anything over a one by one. Uh, Hassani asks, both are accomplished end gamers with this in consideration. What approach should Jagex take to ensure the new Fortis Coliseum is a smash hit from release? Example, things to avoid, things to include, mechanics that should be considered or introduced. If you guys have even thought about that at all. Um, first off, I, I think we can scrap the puzzles. I think we... Mm -hmm can maybe agree on that <laughs> yeah um yeah i had even planned to do that i would like some like click intensive stuff like maybe not to the point of awakened leviathan but some kind of endurance uh precise clicks would be cool definitely some some advanced pathing what about you Lee? what i'm really hoping to see is um a lot of emphasis on the risk versus reward for the uh, streak system. True. I'm really hoping for it to uh, kind of mimic like the streak system from RS3 where uh, the boss fight gets like progressively more difficult and progressively more rewarding, but you always have a lot on the line. So you, like you really have to make that decision if you want to like bump it up to the next level or if you want to cash out. Mm -hmm. I think just along those lines is it, it is crucially important that you can't get RNG'd. Like, if you're going to risk the next, you know, variant that comes out, like, there, there shouldn't even be a chance that you could just execute it perfectly and still get fucked just because of yeah. RNG. True. That would be so annoying. Can you imagine that? <laughs> like, just risked everything <laughs> and you just actually performed perfectly and you just got RNG'd. Oh, my God. Would you guys prefer to, like, see... I don't know what big unique it's going to be, but, like, would you prefer to see it, like, before you check your chest, but, like... Or what am I trying to say? I, yeah, I think I know what you're saying. Like just being able to see exactly what you could claim, right? Yeah. I think, that's I think it'd be kind of fun to have it not like that. I think it's good to have it, but it's mainly because of content creators. Like I think it builds more hype to see exactly what you're losing. If yeah, you that's true. Fair enough. But there's an argument for both for sure. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I think if we're talking about like with the streak system and deciding if you want to go to the next wave or not, I think you should be able to see what you got because that's kind of what's making you even have to decide. Otherwise, you know, like, okay, wave 18 is my stopping point. I'm going to go to wave 18 and cash out every time. That's true. Like, if you can see your loot and you get like whatever big drop on wave like 14, like you have to decide like, okay, I'm pretty comfortable going like five more waves past this, but... Do I want to risk it? Fair enough. It's kind of like a. It's kind of like whenever you get like Snapdragon Seven and Atus, you're like, oh, do I? Gain? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like that, right, but like a lot more skill based and a lot higher level. You know. My mind has changed. That that is just so annoying when you get like a drop, like first kill of a dragon. Ven and Atus is a great example. Just like you finally set up the nice thing and you get a dragon pickaxe or a hundred snaps like god damn it i gotta go back out yeah so like even though like you know you're really comfortable you could go like five more waves no problem at all but there is like i'm sure there's still going to be some kind of risk to dying yeah. like even if you are that comfortable like where you can like make a couple mistakes and just be dead like you're you're gonna have to decide if you want to risk that or not yeah I, I just think that would i think it would give the content a lot of longevity especially if it's actually rewarding enough to do you guys Surely there will be like a final boss, like Zuck. I don't right? know. I don't know. I, I, I thought it was pitched as like never ending, pretty much. Yeah, I hope there isn't, to be honest. Maybe there's gonna be some like Zuck difficulty ones, like kind of like the kiln where it'd be cool like, if there were uh like bosses once you get like so far up the ladder, like every ten waves is like some yeah. new boss and you keep progressing up the ladder. That's how like uh what like the old Mortal Kombat games used to be. Like, you'd fight a few, like, easy fights, and then you'd have, like, a boss fight, and then you'd have a few more, like, easy fights, and then a boss fight, and it would just move you up the ladder. That would be the way to do it. Yeah. That's a so then, idea. like, especially if, if, you get a, if you get a nice drop or, say, you make it to the next boss fight, you're not very comfortable with this boss fight. You might want to cash out right before the boss fight, but you know if you beat the boss, you get a big reward waiting. 
Yeah, that would definitely be the way to go. Instead of just like a progressive, just every single wave's getting a little bit harder. It's almost nice to have that little breeze where it's like, okay, like I've just climbed this little hurdle back to like a little bit of easy and then the hurdles progressively get harder. Yeah. Yeah, reduce intensity for a little bit. Exactly. Yeah, I'm excited. We'll we'll see. But for sure there should not be an end. I think it's important that it is endless. Um the thing is, what's tough about endless is like, you, like there there will be those few players where like if if you're really gonna scale the rewards appropriately, and if it is truly endless, or to a point where it's like you know 500, or it's just it it's not endless technically, but nobody's gonna get to that point. It's like, do you make it so people are now just making 200 mil an hour, like doing like it's just it's so hard to balance things like that. I feel like. It's it's kind of how I feel about TOA in a sense as well. Like TOA is not bad by any means. I think the balancing is pretty decent. But if, for example, TOA shot up to like an 800 and people that like the very end game were able to just fully do it perfectly and it took like, I don't know, hour and 20 minutes and it's a literal 60% chance of a purple, it's just like, you, I guess they deserve it, but uh, I don't know. It's like at, at some point there's going to be like a rate that's just so stupid crazy where you're actually just making bills every day, just grinding this. I don't know. It's going to be weird, the balancing they take on the rewards. Okay. Um, Tar Wars asks, do you think the solo TOA made toa overall worse by designing it with solo in mind in comparison to solo cox being a happy accident it's a good question what do you, do you want to go like uh i mean i'm definitely gonna be biased because uh solo toa is definitely my preference for how to do toa or like most things in the game really but uh i uh i find toa to be like I guess the best solo raid one, uh, TOB is uh, no, definitely like the least designed for solo. And then uh, Chambers, like like he was saying in his comment, uh, wasn't designed with solo in mind, but just kind of accidentally ended up that way where it was feasible, and now it's a big part of the game. But uh, I think I think it was a good thing that they kept solo players in mind for uh, for TOA and tried to balance everything appropriately. Uh, I like that they even made sure to keep the scaling more friendly on the team side because of knowing that with having more people you're going to have more distractions more interruptions more things that could possibly go bad so naturally teams are going to do worse than a competent solo player just because more people more factors True. so um i think i think it's nice that they even like kept that in mind and made sure to make the, like team raids faster that way they wouldn't be like atrociously just bad compared to solos yep so I, I I think that's the right way to do it. Like I, I like making solo viable pretty much anywhere where you have that option. Definitely goes in favor of a lot of casual players too. And uh, still making it like worthwhile to be with a team if you have that solid team going. What are your thoughts, Corbin? I honestly don't think I have anything to add. I think he pretty much covered everything. <laughs> yeah, nailed it. But like I I do like that they pretty much made it soloable. Yeah. And because like it would have been nice if TOB was like not needing 150 purple sweets and to ticky it for 25 minutes, like to actually kind of efficiently do it solo would be like honestly, cool. just imagine like one red crab and just no lightning mechanic. Like they don't even have to touch soda sack. You you people would give up like two spots for cabbage sacks or whatever it is, you know. Yeah. yeah. Like you can it's do so funny. to say on a realistic number of tickets, but <laughs> that's what they made solo hard mode. Like it's one red crab that spawns and yeah. the lightning hits like it's... sixteen to twenty, I believe. So like I, I did it without tick eating. Wow. Does the blood fury really heal you that much? Where like you stay um, above that? Or were you just like chugging like the bruise and staying high? No, I had an SGS and Blood Fury. Oh, cool. So you can actually like out heal it? Yeah, so I just SGS the red crab, and then I think there was a couple of times I had to redemption the lightning, but that's yeah. cool. That's that's the way to go about it. It would actually be kind of cool if they looked at um, solo top and just got rid of that fifteen minute section. However, appropriately they could do it. I'm not a expert in solo TOA by any means at all. 
I'm really curious how people that are like really big into solo Tom feel about any kind of changes to that. Cause it would definitely take away a lot of like the old prestige that it has. But I, I feel like the argument for regular Tom that is the blood fury already kind of yeah, took away that, that prestige to yeah. <laughs> so the point where we might as well actually try to make it like look like it was something that was intended. Cause like, yeah, solo ohm definitely not intended, but when you watch someone do it, you're like, Oh, is this how you do it? Yep. Cause it, it looks so natural. Like it looks like it's how it's intended. Yeah. The way you're just making his head like slide across the screen. I would be totally okay with them just adjusting. But yeah, it really is up to, uh, I guess, those the purists that want to keep it. But I, I mean, you guys have literally both solo tobbed, right? I mean, no, I haven't. Oh, you haven't, like? No, I've never. I, I, pl- I don't really play main accounts. I thought for. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, he could. Yeah, that like was clearly two days. But. I don't think I'd like one and done it. I don't think it'd take very long, but I don't think I'd go and like one and done it. Yeah, I'd take a little bit of just learning the mechanics. But um, okay, I was under a misapprehension. But uh, yeah, the I think um, it would be cool for them to just kind of streamline a little bit of things like that. And I really don't think there's an argument against it besides simply just devaluing, which Lake already brought up the point about Blood Fury devaluing it. Yeah, um, actually little tangent do you guys think the blood fairy was a good addition to the game now that it's been in the game for a couple of years in its buffed form no no i don't really like it plus it seems to be one of the big things they're keeping in mind with design these days i.e the know. soul reaper x they they definitely designed the soul reaper x thinking people would use blood fury to sustain to stay at the same hp they were make no mistakes and then heal up to go back to full hp but when you don't use the blood fury you don't end up sustaining the same HP you were. So, like when you spec, you don't get back to full HP. You, you're, you're like half HP then. Wait, it doesn't. It doesn't ramp past the five stack, does it? No, it doesn't. I mean, like damage you past the five stack. No. Yeah, I, I think, think I'm just lost. caps. But you heal up like the damage that you took, pretty much. So, if you're taking more damage from the boss, Blood Fury more than likely is keeping that pretty even. You know. I got you. Yeah, no, Blood Fury was, I mean, it was, I just feel like they, just the way it even is introduced into the game is just really silly. I just feel like it's just obnoxious, and uh, it could have been a great opportunity for Onyxes to be used, but I think when it was, back when it was a 1% heal, now it's a 6%, it was a 1% heal over, like, on average, and um, that was too low, in my opinion, if they're even, Mm -hmm. we're going to have that kind of system. But I think what would have been really great is like just get rid of the whole aspect of a fury. Like why, why are we coming out with something that's like on a, a kind of medium level amulet? Like it would have been cool if you could just charge up with an onyx any of the best in slot, you know, things, and maybe got like a two percent heal, but you're having to constantly fund it with onyxes or something. To be honest, yeah. I, I feel like just any sort of passive heal is just kind of weird, but. I don't know. Kind of like essence of finality from RS3, but that's a whole different ballpark. Yeah, it's just it's just concerning because now I am uh, a completely uh, I'm an addict to the Blood Fury, like I'm <laughs> just fully addicted, and it's clearly just made things easier. Um, I yeah, yeah, I do think it's busted though. Like, what was the soul split healing? Does anyone know? I I can't. Re- I never played back then. With no that. idea. But like just the fact that it's not an overhead and it's just passive just from wearing it. I know. It's just I don't know. It, and I do just think how frequently been. two strength bonus does not lose any DPS. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, see, and again, like what I said like earlier is it it would have been fine if the you know they added this kind of things to just the best in slot jewelry, like um like a torture even. Like I almost feel like that would have been better, but had it just been a 2% heal with a high cost of onyxes and I, I don't know. I just feel like there was a better way to go about it that kind of get a little bit of a benefit, but it's, you're never feeling like you're under an obligation to just have this massive, I don't know. It's just strange to me. And, uh, we've all, we've obviously just gotten fully used to it. And, uh, I don't know. Have you guys ever done, um, Cerberus with it? Like, like, like you literally don't need to bring food to Cerberus. Um, during bingos, I've brought like a switch with an SG. Yeah, just... yeah, same. 
Yeah, you do a, uh, like, I, I would go there, and this is back before I even had Torva, just full Bandos, Arc Light, and a Blood Fury. And just an entire inventory of prayer pods with like a few super combats. And you <laughs> just fully can just out heal everything and bring an SGS, you know, if you want to heal. You don't even need to bring an SGS because you just bring your claws and that heals. Yeah. So it's just crazy. Don't get me wrong. It was fun. Like I had a great time, but I'm like, is this good? Or yeah. I don't know. Just like that's a place where like you can either do that or you can just optimize it and kind of do the same like i think there was some trips where i did like 55 60 like doing two to one and shield flicking red x stuff like that but the fact that you can just afk with a blood fury is kind of i mean it's an old slayer boss who really cares i know that's what it's like the slippery slope like ah who cares all this who cares all this and then it's but what lake said is like now we're designing content behind Blood yeah, with theory. passive healing in mind. Yeah, yeah, that's not good. Concerning. I've just never been a fan of passive healing. Like, there's just no drawback to it, no trade off. Yep, yep. Like, a uh, Sanguine ST was like the first like offender of that, where it was best in slot and passive healing. And at the time, like the healing methods, it was like competing with. I guess you could say where like Sarah Godsword was something we had, and Guthan said and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. it's like. Now stuff like that, like they're, they're all memes now. They're never even considered because they're not passive healing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is a really interesting one. I'm, I'm curious if you guys even have an answer. But find my dog asks, who do you think is the is the single most mechanically skilled player at all aspects of the game, including PvP and PVM? I'd say Bodhi. Personally, like I. Actually, Lay is pretty goaded now too. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at PKing, but I definitely am not the best. But Lake is really solid at both. Bodhi's pretty solid at both. Even like solo missions, good. I don't know. I'm curious what uh. I'm just chatting. Like, do you have anybody? Um, I don't know. Because what's funny is like I'm I'm thinking Lake as well, just only because I've uh... I don't want to say myself. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's why I wanted to hear if you had a name in mind so I could compare the two. But uh, no, I mean I, I mean yeah, go. We've all seen what poor Kazer can do on PVM, and I, I've heard he's really good at oh, PVP. I've never true. watched him, so I can't say that. That's the thing. I think he had really solid. Again, I I don't want to say myself. So <laughs> on fine, on... you could say me. I've beat you in LMS like twice. <laughs> back in the day okay, port kazard <laughs> see I, I would love to see some port kazard uh little clips of him pking um i mean i'd even throw in scotty there just simply because uh i've, I've seen him do his little bh streams and he's pretty decent but i i don't i don't really know what i'm looking at in regards to pvp like is it just nhing is it just like what's going on here and uh i don't think any like top pvm or like that has like actually like put out enough like pvp content like that for anything to anyone for anyone to be considered honestly yeah because like especially with how broad pvp is like are we talking like lms in aging that's something exactly. i would say i'm really good at but like no chance in hell i hold my own in a brew fight without going and doing a like probably 100 hours of practice with getting used to brew fighting and then not even to mention like bh style fighting vinge fighting you know yeah that's why different brackets so many different elements I'm almost leaning on you, Lake, only because anybody that is extremely good at PKing, which there are quite a few, like none of them can do a 600 TOA. None of them can do a no pillar inferno. Like you just don't see that, and so that's why uh, I think just like the overall balance of that question in particular. And, and you yeah, have, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah so um, I I do agree. Like not not for like me specifically, but I do agree that like the as far as the crossover goes it's going to be more on the pvm side it's going to be like a top pvmer that's also good at pvp that's what it has because to be. none of the none of the none of the top pvpers are like above average really at pvm have you ever considered by the way of or like either of you have you guys considered getting involved in pking like has it ever been a desire of yours like to truly just main account pk and just see no. how good you can get I've, i mean i wanted to a tiny bit whenever i was like going for like a thousand lms and all that 
but then uh like i was saying like it pretty much came down to brew fighting i was like oh if i want to do this then i'm gonna have to invest like probably 100 hours into getting used to a different type of fighting than what i was doing for the last i don't know 500 hours or whatever it was you know <laughs> yeah because uh, it really it really does make a big difference because like in lms for example like momentum is so key because they can't hit you off while, while healing yeah like they're literally st stuck there eating sharks if you're if you're like if you have that much momentum and with with brew fighting it kind of lets the people that are really good like show off a little bit because it gives them more uh chances for recovery so like they can change the momentum in a heartbeat yeah yeah definitely. like i've i went to rev caves a few times like in decent gear but like I hold my own, but it's nothing like LMS. Yeah, yeah. Like said. No, I think both of you, yeah, both of you have proven like you can hold. You're not. You guys are neither of you are incompetent by any means in PK. You can yeah. fight somebody. Like, I just feel like the the brute fighting part of it is a big part because that's how yeah. you control the momentum. Mm -hmm. uh, LMS is really good for the fundamentals, like one take in your weapons. Uh, I, I'm not gonna call one take barraging a fundamental, but that's something like I, I learned it from LMS. Yep. And that's stuff that will like definitely give you a big edge in like actual wilderness PKing, but brew fighting is like controlling the momentum entirely. And I, I feel like that's like a big thing, and you don't get any of that from LMS really. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So uh, I guess we're th these. That was kind of like the final main question that uh, I'm seeing here in the topics. Is there anything that you guys wanted to address before we sort of wrap things up with uh, like a few shout outs? No, I think um, we're good. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Well, uh, I appreciate you both coming on, talking for uh, a few hours. Um, this was really nice. So I guess I'll start with you, Lake, if you have uh, up to three shout-outs, anybody from the community or just anybody you think uh, deserves a little little love. If Puggin has his, can he go first? Cause I, uh, <laughs> sure, if, if he I has I need a his. second, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All I could think of is is Zandy, and I think I shouted him out last time. <laughs> that, well, the, the, yeah, I'm trying not to shout yeah. out anyone I shouted last time. And last time, <laughs> I want to say it was like noob type, no monkey. I think you might have been my third one, Corbin. Let's go. Yeah, noob type's a really good one. Because yeah, I feel like I he's add, still underrated. Stop saying his name. We can't shout them out. I, I did last time. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't say his name again. <laughs> You know what? I, this is going to be the first episode where I think I'll give a shout out first, just to give you guys a little bit more time. He's but, gonna uh, say noob type. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, noob type called it. No. Um, well, shout out to noob type anyway. But uh, I, I want to give a, a little shout out to Hebox for uh, his um, just uh, skyrocket into the scene as of late. Him just be, becoming like a full time content creator has been really awesome. Um, and just his, uh, you know, he, he does his takes don't align with everybody's, but I, I think he has proven himself to be very passionate about the game. And I, I like that he's like speaking up about certain things and especially in regards to skilling. So shout out to him. Um, well, shout out to both of you for coming on. Uh, and I think my other shout out will just be to the team in general, just the J mods, just a big shout out to them for making hard decisions for the most part and being very aware of what the community wants and being like transparent. I mean, I think it's easy to take for granted just how good our JMod team is. Like the fact that we can just yell on Reddit and Twitter and like actually get things <laughs> to like change. Yeah, it's, that's a good point. It's, it's a blessing. And so, uh, and they're just, they're very humble. Like we don't see J mods often that have an ego. Like they're just very willing to concede to the community and be willing to share their input without you know, being aggressive toward anything. So uh, yeah, shout out to them. You might've given me one. Okay. Um, It's kind of going off yours, but Mod Goblin. He uh, King. He always well, up with my bullshit in, in DMs, and he was our our old method manager, and he's just a he's a good dude overall. Yeah, he's he's reached out to me like on s several occasions, more than several. Just you know, either having watched my video gives me some insight, or like just ask me how he thinks about, or ask me how I think about like a certain thing, and it's like just. 
the fact that he's just willing to reach out to players because it's not just me like he'll reach out to other players and just ask them about things and he's very involved you have yeah. uh, or, uh, lake do you got any i got some okay so uh, my first shout out is going to go to a man that we have spoken about a couple times on the podcast for a very good reason, uh, Mutz. He, uh, like you were mentioning earlier, he uh, he's done so much that he really just doesn't get enough credit for. Like, uh, I, I, I really can't say how happy it made me whenever I uh, watched his stream, whenever he was actually finishing the Grandmaster and he had like nearly 2,000 viewers and like he, he got gifted, he got gifted like, a, like up to 1,000 total subs and just like seeing that kind of success for him. Made me so happy, and um, I don't know. He he deserves stuff like that more often, really. Yeah, for everything true. that he's done. Uh, on top of that, another hardcore creator, but on the YouTube side, uh, Lemoy. He's oh, uh, damn, he's been having a series a that one. I've been super interested in. He's uh, basically it's kind of similar to Torvestas, but um, I, I would argue a little bit riskier, honestly. But um, just like Wilderness Rush hardcore, doing things that are pretty low combat and uh, yeah. Just the rate that he goes, uh, it, it's been a really good watch. And if you if you like hardcore content, definitely a good one. But that was uh, Lemoy. And my last one, uh, you, I'm gonna go back to Corbin before my last one, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Lemoy is a, a really good one. I didn't think of him. Like I watch every single video, like as soon as it pops up. Um, I mean, I guess another creator I do that with is Randy, but. He's already pretty established, but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give a shout out to Randy because yeah. oh yeah, his YouTube is big shout out, crazy, and I don't miss a video. So yeah, Randy is uh, really special, and he's he's a good guy too. He he really is. I mean, he's he's very kind in in uh, like like his like his actual personality. He's, he really cares mm -hmm. about other people, and uh, you don't really get to see that often in creators generally. Like they kind of keep to themselves relatively but he's reached out a few times on me when i've had like controversy and stuff and he's always just like hey man like don't take it too harshly like he'll he'll say those kind words where it's like man like i i needed to hear that and he's like aware of that which is really cool mm -hmm. so big shout out yeah i've also had really nice conversations with Randy. yeah um i don't know who i shouted out last time but i'm gonna give the last one to travis 42 hell yeah How's he doing, employer. by the way? Because I know you guys are pretty close. He's good. We're uh, staying together at TwitchCon next month. I'm going, oh. by the way. So I'm. You I'm, are? Yeah, I've decided I'm going to okay. go get my plane tickets. So I want to meet you guys. Are you going, Lake? No, we're not going. Katie is uh, actually flying back to Texas during that week for mm. her uh, nephew's birthday. Okay. Are well, you also flying sad to, to not see you, but I definitely want to meet you, Corbin. Yeah. I guess you're probably taking care of the dogs, huh? If you don't go. Yeah. All right, like final. Uh, I would say my last shout out would be to uh, Makeru and all the other RS3 guys that uh, just came over. They, uh, I've only had like two streams since we got back from uh, our little Texas trip, and uh, they started playing during the trip. And since they've come over, like just in those two streams, I noticed like a pretty big influx of uh, like new players that are coming over. And like they let you know they're coming over and they have questions and stuff and I don't know it's just cool a little bit of like revitalization in the community. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know the RS3 guys, but a good shout out. Uh, basically just like five of the biggest RS3 creators uh, switched over to old school and started a uh, group hardcore together. Is that like just and they just brought like their communities with them pretty much? Is it just for fun? Like are they just kind of doing it, like temporarily or? Uh, it's mainly we're about to make the podcast go on another two hours <laughs> mainly it's because of all the hero pass bullshit so let's extend if you guys don't mind just briefly like what what is that if you can keep it not two hours uh i think it's just pay to win like yeah actual isn't that what buffs. the game already was like so what's the difference between what rs3 already was with pay to win in this i mean so you could buy it was like, pay to win to skip to time gated XP. stuff i think yeah like xp and shit but i think this gives Ooh. like actual i could be wrong but like buffs to your weapons and buffs against certain bosses or like things yeah, there was you one that was like paying the money yeah there was one that was like you can get enough points to earn this reward by playing for so long or you can buy it and this reward gives you like 20 percent damage reduction at zamorak boss or something like that you know 
like mm-hmm. actual like good stuff that you could either earn through the game by, by playing for a long time or just straight up buy. And it was just like a bunch of little perks like that. Interesting. So they're just um, like protesting in a sense. I don't know about protesting <laughs> as much as like they quit pretty much is what it sounds like. Okay. But the five biggest RS3 streamers, that's kind of uh, saying something. So do you think the RS3 team is... Well, they're not the biggest. Uh, I think the RS guy is considered the biggest, and I think okay. he's still going strong on RS3. But they, yeah, they're like five of the biggest creators on, on that side. Wow. Do you think RS3, or, I mean, it's still Jagex, do you think they're going to make a change? Uh, I haven't been keeping up with it at all, to be honest. Okay. I know there's been a lot of backlash, and... For I saw everything those guys put up with it's it's got to be pretty bad if they're riding you know i i saw something on twitter it, like it was something regarding the hero pass and it just looked like one of the j mods would just got so defensive about it and just like couldn't see the other side entirely like just i, I don't even know what it was all about because i'm just completely like lost in that whole like i don't understand it fully but just the arguments i've seen with like certain j mods i'm like what this seems like I don't know. It just seems weird. Like, it seems like, and I know it's a different game. Like, we have a lot of freedom in our game, which RS3 doesn't really get to enjoy. It's just kind of like RS3 does whatever they want, and uh, players just have to accept it because there is no polling system there. But, yeah, it seems rough. I feel like, I I don't know. It's hard because I truly don't know what's going on because just uninformed. But from the outside looking in, it kind of seems like the problem is really that the MTX has hit PVM. Uh, it does seem like RS3, like you either PVM or you do clue scrolls. Mm. And I, I guess those are where they draw the line up. They don't want MTX of making PVM easier and they don't want MTX like finishing their clues for them. I see. And Heroes Pass does that, like it crosses that line. Uh, definitely on the PVM side. I don't know if there's if there was anything clue related in there. Okay. But like like I said, the uh, like damage reduction in Zamorak, that was uh, definitely a thing there. Interesting. Well, thanks for the info. Yeah, I don't, I'm unaware, but that's a good shout out then, especially. Okay, um, Lake and Puggin, thank you guys both for coming on once again. Uh, it's nice. It's always nice talking. Um, yeah, it was a pleasure. Yeah. Okay, uh, down in the description, everybody that's still listening, there you can find Lakes and Puggins' links down there, uh, their Twitch, and their... I can't remember, Lake, do you, you don't have a YouTube, right? Uh, no, but Puggin does. Yeah, his his YouTube's growing. Um, which and it's I'm, been popping. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of... I'm proud of you, Puggin. I, I, don't, I don't remember if a couple years ago I had mentioned something about YouTube, but... Uh, I'm I'm glad you've been on it. I hope you. Yeah, I actually do it. think you you said you wanted me to do YouTube. Yeah, or, how, how have you enjoyed more. it? By the way, it's a, uh, it's good. It's fun. It's, I tried editing like myself, and it was a struggle. <laughs> and yeah, that's one of my good. one of my mods helps me with editing, so it makes it a lot easier. That does Link still edit for you, or is it someone else now? No, it's a, uh, AMA. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I hope you, nice. I, I just hope you keep up with it. It's, it's always, it's slow progress initially. I mean, I'm, I'm, I can't speak because I'm not a, like on a super high level of YouTube, but it's, it only grows. It feels like it's, it's really nice. It feels like a, pro, like a secondary project that you're just working on. Um, but the, yeah, thank you. So down in the description, everybody check out their links. Also, if you want to support the cast, there is a Patreon link, uh, and you get your name on the title screen. All right, guys. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Peace out. Peace.